welcome to the Dowling Gym. It's senior night on this uh, February 5th, two, 2021, as Dowling hosting Urbandale in a girls and boys basketball doubleheader. Uh, as you see on your uh, screen right now, we're about ready to introduce the Dowling seniors. Dowling girls have six seniors will be introduced by head coach Kristen Meyer in her fifth year, along with her staff, Joel Danner. <laughs> Scott Babinat and Audrey Faber, along with uh, photographer Tom Donahue, the JV1 coach. And for the presentation, let's go down the, to the floor and PA announcer, Denny O'Grady. Paige plans to attend Mizzou University to study journalism 
and also we lost track. Paige Hodge. Our next nominee, number one, Ellen McKay. Karen Robin Teresa is one of the Moving along to St. Anthony's Perry. For other activities, include softball, track, group and crew, group council student board representative, student ambassador, and National Honor Society. Her favorite basketball memory is our annual trips to Minnesota and vlogging with the lady at the top of Iowa. Valentine's on attending the University of Michigan to study in the College of Blue Arts and play softball for the Wolverines. Ella McVeigh. Our next honoree, number three, Margaret Tobias. Parents Chris and Lori, sister Heather and Brother Alexis. Good luck to St. Pius. Other activities Margaret is involved in include track, student and seniors, Christmas baskets, group crew, and student ambassador. Her favorite memory is the bus rides to Minnesota, the locker room before games, and all the laughs we've had during film sections. Margaret Pratt was at the University of Kentucky to play softball and major in pre-pharmacy. Margaret Tobias. The final senior, number five, Maddie Wishman. Her college, Stephanie, sister Kayla, brothers Jordan and Joe. They belong to St. Pius. Her other activities involved include volleyball, tennis, National Honor Society, group crew, and Special Olympics. Maddie's favorite memory is Emma making the shot to win the volley game and dancing in the locker room before games. Maddie plans to attend the University of Iowa to study business. business. Betty Whitman. Have a big hand for these great senior basketball players and their parents. Thank you for all you've done.
Hey, good evening. Welcome to the Dowling Catholic High School Gymnasium alongside Steve Devaney. I'm Mark Amadale as we get set for girls and boys basketball here at the Dowling Gym on senior night. And this is uh, always a special night. The Dowling Catholic girls basketball team and some of their support staff were recognized uh, before the game as the warm-ups are taking place now between Dowling and Urbandale. I'm joined tonight by Steve Devaney. And uh, Steve, it's always good to be part of senior night and for some of these coaches I know coach OC is going to be part of his 15th senior night and coach Meyer here at Dowling Catholic uh, she will be part of her fifth senior night but uh, always important to recognize the seniors they've been in the program the longest starting back in the grade school middle school days and here at high school and uh, we're going to be seeing a lot of that uh, here in the coming weeks Welcome, and welcome to Senior Night, Steve Devaney. Thank you very much, Mark. Good to be here with you. And as I walked in the gym tonight, they were just starting the Senior Night. And because all the parents were not in the stands, they were walking out to be recognized with their children. It was, uh, gosh darn it, you know. But on the bright side of things, they got to have a Senior Night. They continue to get to play the games. And uh, we have to take what uh, small victories we can get out of this season. No question about it. And, of course, that was brought to you on CISN as we are uh, simulcast tonight with CISN.TV uh, along with Iowa Catholic Radio. And CISN brought you a coverage of that. And congratulations to Dowling senior basketball players. I mentioned there were six seniors recognized, including Ella McVeigh, Maddie Wishman, Paige Hobbs, Margaret Tobias, Olivia Bailey and Lexi Bowles, and uh, they're going to move on from Dowling, graduate, and move on to bigger and better things, as your daughters, two daughters, and son did not too long ago, Grandpa Devaney, is what I recall. <laughs> yeah, a long time ago, but uh, yeah, it's a great thrill for the kids to get this far in their career, and uh, this team seems to be a very close-knit group. They seem to all get along well, smiles on their faces, and they were really cheering for each other uh, as they received the uh, senior night awards, and the underclassmen were uh, were giving them a good ovation. So it, it's nice to see, and uh, it's a great highlight for anybody who's played in high school to get to a senior night. No question about it. And again, Mark Amadale, Steve Devaney, bringing to you tonight's game here in Iowa Catholic Radio from the Dowling Gym. We're high above in the uh, well, the, the so-called ramp track, whatever you want to call it, balcony area, as we are behind the benches and scorekeepers, but we're upstairs, and we're joined by our, our CISN.TV uh, crew. We want to thank them for being along. As, uh, uh, they're kind of hit and miss with this throughout the year, especially the home games they're here, Steve. So you get to be on TV, I get to be on TV, and then it stays on replay forever. <laughs> yeah, well, we're looking forward to a good ball game tonight. Yeah, we certainly are. Well, let's take a look at the contest. Urbandale girls. Now, this is a game, I, I think, did you do the game with Joe when it was over at Urbandale? Yes. Okay. Uh, Dowling and Urbandale for the second time this season. Uh, Urbandale comes in with a record of 3-6. and six. They uh, just won a big game for them up at Ames on Tuesday night. They're coming off a win 63-48 for uh, first-year head coach Whitney Lawler and uh, her staff, uh, Mark Bethke, Kevin Klein, and uh, they, they, that, that had to be a great bus ride home. Anytime you go to Ames and get a win, uh, it's their third win, and you just build on that. And the uh, Jayhawks are doing that. They don't have a, a, a deep bench, but they're going to go start five and then maybe three others off the bench, and they can shoot. Steve, they made a they tied a school record against Ames with 15 made threes, wow. and that is, uh, as I mentioned, tied as Urbandale school record. So you know, hope they don't bring that kind of energy if you're a Dowling fan tonight. Well, in the scouting report, you know, Coach Meyer is aware of that, and uh, – one of the strengths of the Dowling girls team this year is the uh, the guard play and the quickness out there in the backcourt. And I would guess that uh, uh, because the Maroons have a little size advantage on the interior, that I would guess that our guards are going to go try to run those shooters off the three-point line and make them put it on the floor. And, of course, uh, you know, Urbandale can match up big with Le Lexi Bowles with Meredith Umlin in the post. That'll be a nice matchup between Lexi and her. Lori, Lorraine Kua. Uh, a 5'10 forward, well, she'll match up nicely with Gipple at times, and then they'll have their three guards, Kelsey Heller, Peyton Nodding, and Macy Gaskell. Uh, the three guards match up with Dowling. So this is an evenly matched team. And Dowling won the uh, uh, previous meeting uh, earlier this year, that, a game that you called with uh, Joe Stacy uh, by the score of 65-34 over Urbadale back on January 8th. But it's been a month since that game, and a lot changes, Steve. Yeah, no, any any given night, as you've seen with other, other matchups, the uh, nationally ranked Drake Bulldogs men team last Sunday had to go to overtime to beat uh, Illinois State, and they played the same two opponents uh, 
on the same floor 24 hours later and they beat them by 35. So uh, the, the previous score over at Urbandale, the Maroons played well that night, but uh, it, it's no indication of how this game's going to going to be played, uh, and they'll have to give it their best effort again. Yes, they will. All right, and Dowling coming in, ranked number nine in the latest uh, girls' union poll that just came out. We'll review that after our first break, but uh, Kristen Meyer in her fifth year at Dowling, uh, they bring an eight and four record. Girls' regional uh, brackets should be out next week potentially. That's what I'm hearing, but we'll see. And that'll be the final regular season games for the Dowling, or well, for uh, 5A girls basketball a uh, week from tonight. That'll be their final games, and then they'll have they'll start the postseason. So we're guessing brackets will come out for Class uh, 4A and 5A next week. The brackets just came out the other day for girls 1A, 2A, and 3A. And it's always interesting to see who, who you're placed with, who your opponents are, who's on the other, you know. Yeah. We're all bracketologists, Steve. <laughs> Even at the high school yeah, level, absolutely. You're, you're all looking about, everybody's looking about two or three games away <laughs> and say, hey, if, if we happen to knock these guys off, then who do we get next? That's right. And uh, it's an exciting part of the, of the season. I mean, you, you work all year to have a chance to make a postseason run, and uh, the Dowling girls are in a good position to, uh, to make a run this year. And uh, they hope to, as does uh, everyone else. And, uh, of course, we want to thank our CISN.TV crew, Anna Bassett, who's our on-site producer, raise your hand over there, Anna. And, of course, uh, Pete Tarpey and our thoughts and prayers to Pete and his family with the passing of his wife, Mary Maloney, earlier this uh, a week ago today. And uh, Pete is here, and, you know, he's, he's doing very well. He thanks everybody for the thoughts and prayers, and, uh, you know, i, I got to hand it to him. But uh, we keep Mary in our prayers and his family, his kids, in our prayers. But uh, uh, we're going to take a break here. Pre-game at Senior Night here at Dowling. Mark Amadale, Steve Devinney, and we'll be back with more from the Dowling Gym. We'll have the starting lineups and Steve's key to the game here on Iowa Catholic Radio and CISN.TV. To everyone who believes in competition and good sportsmanship, who knows it's not about the trophies or the medals, but rather the lessons learned. For those who understand, it's not whether you win or lose, just that you give your best. So go ahead, lace them up, take the field, have fun, and play. For the experience, for the memories, for the love of the game, Shields. Jim, senior night here for the Maroons as they host Urbandale in a girls and boys basketball doubleheader alongside Steve Devenny. I'm Mark Amadale. Our thanks to the CISN crew led by cameraman Reese Webb and Anna Bessett, our studio producer uh, here on site at Dowling. And, of course, uh, Jeff Piggott, our Iowa Catholic radio producer back at the uh, – Iowa Catholic Radio Studios. Let's take a look at the starting lineups tonight, and then we'll go to Steve's keys to the game. And we'll start with the uh, Urbandale Jayhawks. The head coach is Whitney Lawler. In her first year, three wins, six losses. She's assisted by Mark Bethke, Kevin Klein, Danny Breon, and Ty Sharon. Of course, uh, Coach Lawler played at Urbandale and at Simpson. Out outstanding soccer and basketball player. Went under the name, her maiden name, Whitney Franker. And her and her husband, Dan, live in Urbandale now. Uh, they just got back from Colorado a few years ago. And they have two boys, ages three and a year and a half. And uh, so she's a, a mom, a coach, and a mentor. And uh, she has uh, uh, done a great job with this program after taking over for uh, Kenton Tunnell, who uh, uh, did a, a great job at Urbandale and moved on, Steve. Yeah, no, she, it, it's, a, it's great to have former players back in the program as coaches. And you can look up at the Hall of Fame board and see what she did as a player, and uh, and the girls that you know aspire to be more like her, and she gets their respect right away because of the success that she had. So good for her that she's over there, and uh, it, it's a good role model for the kids, like you said. It certainly is. And we'll, the, the uh, Jayhawks, as I mentioned, with a record of three and six, they will start this lineup at one guard, Kelsey Heller, a five-five senior. Uh, their leading scorer averaging just over ten points. 
And uh, she has made 10 made threes, and she'll wear number five. The third, gu- the second guard is Peyton Odding. Odding, a uh, 5'4 senior, averaging three and a half points, has made nine three-pointers. She'll wear number 10. And the third guard for Urbandale is Macy Gaskell, 5'9 senior, averaging six and a half points. Leads the team with two and a half assists. She'll wear number 23. At one forward for the Jayhawks, Lorraine Kua, 5'10 senior, averaging four and a half points, five and a half rebounds, and uh, she'll wear number 33. And at center for Urbandale, Meredith Umlin. Umlin, a 6'2 senior, averaging eight points, leads the team with seven and a half rebounds and 14 blocks, and Umlin will wear number 45. Off the bench for Urbandale, we'll see McKenna Cole, number one. Also off the bench, Taylor Mulligan, number 15, a 5'10 freshman. McKenna Cole was a, is a 5'4 senior. And we'll also see Josie Birdwell, a 5'7 junior, uh, off the bench for the Jayhawks. She'll wear number, Birdwell wore number 35. So the starters again, Heller, Odding, Gaskell, the three guards for Urbandale, Kua, and Umlin in the post. And the Jayhawks come in averaging 44 points on offense, give up 54.9 points on defense. And again, they're coming off. They tied their school record in the win over Ames Tuesday night with 15 made threes. But they come into this contest losing four of their last six games and a record of three and six. Now for Dowling Catholic, the Maroons on senior night, they'll go with a little bit of a different starting lineup. Uh, the Maroons will still start the uh, three senior guards, Ellen McVeigh, a 5'7 senior, averaging six points on the season. She has 12 threes, going to the University of Michigan to play softball. She'll wear number one. The uh, second guard is Margaret Tobias. Tobias, a 5'6 senior, averaging eight and a half points, has made 15 threes on the season and leads the team with two and a half assists. She's going to the University of Kentucky to play softball. She'll wear number three. And the third guard for Dowling, Maddie Wishman, a 5'7 senior, averaging eight points, and leads the team with 24 made threes. Wishman will wear number five. At one forward, getting the start tonight is Olivia Bailey. Olivia is a 5'11 senior, averaging four points, three and a half rebounds, and she'll wear number 25. And at center for Dowling is Lexi Bowles, a 6'2 senior, averaging... 14.8 14.8 points a contest, a leading scorer for Dowling and 26 blocks on the season. That also leads the team in shooting 84% from the free throw line. Bowles will wear number 35. She is headed to Illinois State to play for the Redbirds in college basketball. So it's McVeigh, Tobias Wishman, the three guards for Dowling, Bailey and Bowles. The head coach is Kristen Meyer in her fifth year, assisted by Joel Danner, Scott Babinett, and Audrey Faber. And the Bruins come in with their wearing uh, with a record of 8-4. and four. They're ranked number 9 in the 5A poll. It just got out the other day, averaging 64 points on offense, giving up 46 points on defense. And now our keys to the game presented by DeArmond Ford in Indianola. And uh, Steve Devenny, your thoughts? We'll start with the visitors from Urbandale. What are, the, what are the keys for Urbandale? I think for Urbandale to have success tonight, Mark, on the heels of that good shooting, uh, perimeter shooting up at Ames the other night, they're going to have to do that again to have any chance tonight to, to beat the Maroons. The last time that we faced it, the Urbandale Jayhawk girls, they only had four made three-pointers over there a month ago. So in order for them to stay in the game, I think they'll need to do that again. And then in addition to that, when you make shots, you, uh, you prevent the other team from getting run outs. The Maroons like to run on the fast break. They're very, very good in transition. And Urbandale's going to have to limit that tonight to have a chance for the, uh, for the W. On the Maroon side, I would look to uh, post scoring as we always do. Uh, the leading two scorers for the Maroons are Lexi Bowles and uh, Emma Gipple. And uh, the, if, the, if, the, uh, if they're going to have success, they're going to have to have scoring from there. And then a flip side of that is that the guards for Dowling is going to have to shut down some of that outside scoring for the, uh, for the Urbandale Jayhawks. All right, our keys to the game presented by DeArmond Ford, a family-led business guided by their core values of hard work, trust, honesty, and integrity. Check out the all-new DeArmond Ford in Indianola at DeArmondFord.com. We're going to take a break, come back to the tip-off, Dowling and Urbandale here at the Dowling Gym. But first, a word from Dr. Dan Ryan, the president of Dowling Catholic High School, and our pregame prayer with Father Ryan Andrew.
And welcome back to the Dowling Catholic High School Gymnasium alongside Steve Devenny. I'm Mark Amadale. Our studio producer is Jeff Pickett. As we're just about set for tip-off between Dowling and Urbandale, I want to thank our supporters of Iowa Catholic Radio and sponsors, including Mercy One, Kemen, Ashworth Vision Clinic, Construction Professionals, and Dental Associates. Of course, the folks at CISN.TV will be running their ads during our breaks. So as we simulcast tonight's game, Dowling and Urbandale here on CISN.TV and Iowa Catholic Radio. Well, De Coach Davini, nice job on those keys to the game. Uh, Sponsored by DeArm and Ford Indianola on the CISN side. You yeah, did a nice job. And I'm going to go back and check your work in the post game. I'm going to check your work and see how close you were. How does that sound? <laughs> well, it's sometimes the flip, flip of a coin, but uh, <laughs> heads versus tails. That's right. Heads versus tails. All right. It's about ready for, set for tip off. Our officials, Derek Clausen, Terry Harding, and Dan Wilson, our three-person, three-man officiating crew, is about set for the tip-off as Meredith Unlin, wearing number 45, Urbandale in their road red uniforms with uh, blue numbers and white trim. Dowling in their home white uniforms with maroon numbers and letters. Dowling go right to left towards the south basket here and to our left here at the Dowling Gym, and Urbandale going left to right, obviously, towards the north basket. And we're about set to go, and we are. As as a tip won by Bowles, but she tips in the backcourt and picked up by the Urbandale Jayhawks. And we're underway on Friday night basketball, the first game of the night in the CIML there, Steve. Yep, should be fun tonight. It's always uh, great to be in the gym watching these kids play. It certainly is. And, of course, uh, Dowling finishes out the season next week on the girls' side with two home games, Tuesday night against Ankeny Centennial and Friday against Johnston here at the Dowling Gym. And it would be a girl-boys contest. And before they head their separate way, ball slapped in the back court, and they're going to give it to uh, Urbandale. There's no score. Dowling opens up man to man. The Maroons have Mc Ella McVeigh, Margaret Tobias, Maddie Wishman, the three guards, with Olivia Bailey, number 25, getting the start in that white uniform out there for Dowling. And Lexi Bowles on senior night, long three, up and no good by Peyton Otting of Urbandale, and the rebound out to Dowling. So. To play about 45 seconds of defense. Maroons in transition. Corner three by Wishman is up and no good. And a fight for the rebound. We got a whistle and a foul on Dowling. That might be on Bailey trying to take the ball away from Umlin. And it is. So Bailey picks up the first foul of the ball game. It's on Dowling. Unfortunate. I didn't see a whole lot of contact there, but uh, that's the call. We're going to go with it. A striped shirt. And you've You've uh, well, impersonated them a few times oh, in your I, early career. I love the striped shirt. Yeah, yeah. They made, they're right there. They made the call. We're up here, so we would take exactly. their word for it. Exactly, yeah. You've called a few uh, high school games in your career. I remember you being down at uh, Carlisle when I was coaching down there yeah. with Coach Fontana. And, that, uh, yeah, those I, were the days. I don't know if we got after you enough, but uh, obviously you went into coaching, so we must have done something too. Here's a steal by Dowling as it's picked up by Tobias. Maroons get it down court to Bailey. Here's Tobias with it. Leads inside the Bulls. Over to Tobias for corner three. Up off the mark. No good. Bulls with the rebound. Lexi on the right block. Goes to the other block. Shot off the glass. Good. Lexi Bowles with the basket. She went right around Meredith Umlin. Yeah. Good activity there by Bowles on the offensive glass. At first they went inside out, and she had a really good assist to Wishman, and who just missed the shot. And Lexi cleaned it up. Great, great uh, play down there. Yep, two to nothing. Dowling with the lead over Urbandale here at the Dowling Gym. Here's Umlin right wing from 10 feet out. No good. Rebound McVeigh. So Dowling the other way with the basketball right to left in front of us towards the south basket. Ella in the front court picks up her dribble. Tries to drill underneath, and she was looking for her teammate that time, Wishman, and it's it like forced a jump the jump ball. ball. Jump ball will go to the Maroons on the alternate possession. Yeah, she tried to thread it down there, but Umlin broke it up and tied the ball up. So Dowling went down the ball. And they get it to Bulls at the free throw line. She'll catch and shoot and score. Right over Lorraine Kua, who was on her that time, and Bulls with her fourth point early. Lexi has a nice mid-range game, too. It's, it's more than just uh, post-scoring down on the block. She can step out and hit jumpers, too. Well, you like it when they can catch and shoot. Now the other way, a shot up and no good by Lorraine Kua of Urbandale, and the ball slapped around, and Bowles comes away with it. Here's Lexi in the front court. Leaves it for Bailey to McVeigh. She'll launch a three right in front of the Urbandale bench, and it's good. Ella. Ella on senior night. Her first three, and that's her 13th three of the year, and it's 7-0 Dowling. It's nice to see her get her feet set early and get some confidence like that. She, uh, she's had some good games lately from the, 
from the shooting perspective. And the ball tipped out of bounds. It'll remain with Urbandale. Jayhawks going with Kelsey Heller, Peyton Nodding, Macy Gaskell, the three guards, with Lorraine Kua and Meredith Umblin rounding out the starting five. Now they're working inside to Umblin. Her shot up no good. Might have been partially blocked by Bowles. Rebound comes out of there and Dowling with it. Bruins in the front court. Now a corner three by Bailey is up. Bounces around, no good. McVeigh gets the rebound. Feeds inside to Bailey. A power dribble, shot off the glass, no good. Rebound McVeigh. And the Maroons out hustling. And we've got a stoppage of play. And we're going to, Fish is going to talk it over. I think we've got a jump ball or a foul. We'll see what rules. Yeah, jump ball, I think. Yep. yep jump ball, and that should be Urbandale possession. Yep, it'll go back to the, uh, the Jayhawks. 4.44 remaining first quarter. 30-second timeout here. 7 nothing. Dowling over Urbandale alongside Steve Devaney. I'm Mark Amadale along with the crew from CISN.TV and Iowa Catholic Radio. Our studio producer, Jeff Pickett. You're right, a 30-second timeout. Dowling leading 7 nothing. Let's go check those keys that you talked about earlier. I'm, I'm quite interested. Are they, <laughs> are they holding to the form, uh, Mr. Devaney? Well, it's early. It is. <laughs> Tonight's game on Iowa Catholic Radio brought to you in part by our good friends at Ashworth Vision Clinic. Mercy won and by Kemen as head coach Kristen Meyer visiting with her group after head coach Whitney Lawler in her first year at Urbandale uses her first time out of 30. And Dowling's going to come out with full court pressure here, Steve. Yep, so. they've, uh, they have a nice advantage here to start the ball game, and they're just trying to uh, stay aggressive and keep attacking here both on both sides of the ball. Jayhawks get it into uh, Gaskell. She dribbles up across the timeline. They feed it inside. And they, Umlin can't get a shot off. They'll throw it out for a three by Kua, and it's no good. Ball slapped out of bounds. It'll be Dowling basketball. And the Maroons will come in with a couple substitution, as we will see Emma Gippel for the first time tonight. She comes in as a reserve on senior night. She'll check in, and Bailey will check out. Also checking out will be Maddie Wishman. In for her mark is uh, Julia Moore, number 21. All right, so the Maroons get their rotation set. Dowling with the ball and a seven-point lead. Maroons won the first meeting, 65-34, a month to the day. That game over at Urbadale as both are in the same division. And now a three-pointer by McVeigh is up and good. One from the left wing and one from the right. She's got six points tonight, Steve. So senior night, she, she's decided she's going to steal the show, huh? <laughs> Doggone softball players taking over a <laughs> basketball game between her and Tobias. Ten-nothing Dowling. With 3.50 remaining in the first quarter. Here's Kua coming off a post uh, ball screen. Now her shot no good. Rebound bowls down court. Julia Moore layup is up and no good. And rebounded by Urbandale and Umlin. Fast and furious. Here's Heller in the front court. Haven't heard much from her tonight thus far. Kua with it. Skip pass over to Keller. Keller drives the lane, kicks it out to Gaskell for three. It's in and out no good. Rebound Dowling and Lexi Bowles. Just a rough start uh, shooting start here for the uh, Jayhawks. Dowling works the ball underneath. McVeigh with it after a bullet pass. Gets it out to Moore. She nearly lost it and Dowling will set their offense with 3-10 remaining. Urbandale and Dowling here at the Dowling Gym. Senior night for the Maroons. And now Gipple on the baseline. Kicks it out to McVeigh again for three. It's in and out no good and a rebound cleared out of there nicely by Umlin. Several offensive rebounds so far for the Maroons tonight. They're really doing a good job of crashing the glass and being active. That time it was one and done by uh, Urbandale. Jayhawks now in the front court. Here's Otting with it. Gets in the corner to uh, Heller. Awful tough for Urbandale to start their offense and actually a double dribble. Double I dribble, believe. yeah. Unforced error there, unfortunately, for the, the Jayhawks. Other games going on tonight. This will be the first one. This is the 5 o'clock start. Urbandale and ninth-ranked Dowling. Valley on the road at Southeast Polk, and both the girls' and boys' games are top ten teams there. Uh, that'll get underway at 6.15, as will the rest, the rest of the games. Roosevelt at North, East at Hoover. That'll be senior night over at Hoover. Ames is at Ankeny Centennial. And then some girls-only games tonight, Lincoln at number two, Waukee. And the boys' contest, Lincoln boys in the road at Ottumwa, and Ankeny at Marshalltown in the boys-only contest. And those games get underway around 7.30. So that's a look at the CIML action. There's some teams that are not playing tonight. Dowling with the ball. Bowls underneath. They're soft the glass. Good. Lexi Bowles went right around Kua for the score, and she has six first-half points. Her and uh, McVeigh with six each, and Dowling's lead is 12. Yeah, that's the awful difficult to stop when she gets ahead of steam. 
Now underneath and a little scoop shot by Birdwell who just checked in is knocked out of bounds. It'll be Dowling basketball. Josie Birdwell, 5'7", junior checking in. Birdwell averaging three points, two and a half rebounds. Her dad was a former head coach at Urbandale, Gary, who's now an assistant at Ankeny for head coach Drew McAnally. So. He didn't have the courage to stick around and watch his daughter play, evidently. <laughs> <laughs> He's coaching right now. Oh, he might be down here. I'm not sure. The goodness. Runs go a little high-low. Julia Moore's pass underneath to Olivia Bailey. And Bailey's shot is blocked. They're going to whistle a foul. 35 was the foul. That would be Josie Birdwell. Yep. We just got done talking about the Birdwell family. We haven't mentioned yet that Urbandale's been in a zone so far the entire first quarter. I think they started out in man, and then that went south, Steve, yeah. after the first two possessions, I, I think. I have, to, I have to go back to the replay. Yeah. Bailey at the free throw line hits the first free throw, 13-0 Dowling. Second free throw also good. Olivia, a 50% free throw shooter coming in. She made both there, so she's now 7 for 12 in the season. It's 14-0 Maroons. Dowling's largest lead is right now over Urbandale. Jayhawks with it. Kua with it. Gets it out, and a long three by Heller. It's no good from the beyond the arc. Rebound slapped around into Tobias' hands. With a minute and a half remaining here in the first quarter, corner three, in and out, no good by Wishman. She's got that lid on the basket. She leads Dowling and made threes with 24 coming in, and she can't get one to fall. I think she's 0 for 3 right now. She's had some good looks, though, and she'll, uh, she'll knock those down. Yep. No question. I like how Dowling's defense, they're overplaying beyond the arc, and that's something you don't see. And now yeah. down the lane, and that's a textbook shot off the glass. Good by Kelsey Heller, just like Julia Moore does for the yeah. Maroons. And Heller breaks the drought, and it's 14-2 to two with under a minute to play. Beautiful uh, dribble penetration there by Heller, and a good left-hand finish. Now whistle and a foul in the backcourt on Julia Moore. That's her first. So second team foul on Dowling, one on Urbandale. Now... Maroons will go a little offense, defense. Bowles will check in for Bailey. Olivia Bailey got bumped in the face a little bit there by Emma Gipple. They were both going for that rebound on the previous possession. Yeah, the She'll training come staff out. wanted to talk to her. So. Yep, she's going down and take a look at her. So I retract my statement. It was offense, defense. Urbandale with the basketball. Josie Bird will enter, number 35. A long three by Heller. It's no good, and a rebound Bowles. Boy, she just racks up those rebounds on a given night. Yeah, her and Emma Gipple, they, you know, unless you have a team that has a lot of size and, and multiple people down in the, in the paint, those two guys, do a, young ladies, do a great job on the boards. And now a long three up and good for Wishman. That's her first three of the night. As Dowling now has knocked down three threes, first by Wishman, and it's 17 to two, Dowling by 15. And now whistle, and we got a foul called on offensive uh, possession by Urbandale. Could be uh, Julian Moore's second foul. Yes, it is. And McVeigh will check in for her. So Julia will sit down. 13 seconds remaining here in the first quarter from the Dowling Gym. DeBruin's senior night. Dowling recognizing six seniors before tonight's game. 10 seconds remaining in the quarter. Heller, they work it inside. Birdwell kicks it out to McKenna Cole, who just checked in. Over to Gaskell. Right side to Heller, can't shoot the three, dribble drives with the left hand, shot off up and good! Kelsey Heller scores her fourth point and we've come to the end of the first quarter with the score. Dowling Catholic 17, Urbandale four, along with Steve Devinney, I'm Mark Amadil, and we'll be back in the second quarter from the Dowling Gym on their senior night here on Iowa Catholic Radio and CISN.TV. 35 years in the automotive industry, I had the opportunity to build on the American dream, just like Henry Ford did over 100 years ago. Introducing the all-new DeArmond Ford Indianola. Like Ford Motor Company, we're a family-led business guided by our core values of hard work, trust, honesty, and integrity. People drive to Indianola to buy Fords. The all-new DeArmond Ford. DeArmondFord.com. Built for America, sold by DeArmond Ford Indianola. Iowans know that winter means snow, ice, and freezing temps. Severe weather can make the roads downright dangerous. Truck Equipment Incorporated has the toughest work equipment that can stand up to the harshest conditions. Look for Western brand snow plows, quality you can count on. Buy new or utilize our repair services. 
We'll order new parts for same-day pickup or delivery. And now you can shop from home with our virtual showroom. Go to truckequipment.com today. And we are back here at the Dowling Gym, underway in the second quarter. The Maroons lead it 17-4 over Urbandale in game one, our girls game. And, Steve, you mentioned it earlier, uh, Urbandale in the zone. I thought they started out in man, but they've been in zone for a pretty good part of that first quarter as Dowling now with the pass by McVeigh too strong, out of bounds as she tried to uh, throw cross court over to Tobias. But uh, Urbandale's defense, they're picking it up a little bit. Yep. That time McVeigh was trying to a skip pass over the top of that zone and just threw it a little bit too high for uh, for Wishman. We want to thank uh, Anna Bassett, our studio or our producer on site here with CISN.TV, and Reese Webb running the camera, and of course Jeff Piggott, our studio producer for Iowa Catholic Radio. Lots of people to thank, including Pete Tarpey, who heads up the CISN crew. CISN.TV. If you want to watch the game while we comment on it. Mark Amadale, Steve Davini is Herbadale with the basketball. Very long possession here for the Jayhawks. Dowling's man-to-man. -man. Down the lane. A shot up and no good by Macy Gaskell. Drew the foul. Two shots coming. I think they're either going to whistle bowls or and they're going to get bowls for the foul. That's her first. That's her first. Te team's fourth foul of the uh, first half. And Gaskell will have a pair coming up for the uh, Jayhawks. Macy Gaskell, a 40% free throw shooter on the air. First one in and out and back in. Gets the Steve Davini roll. Yeah, some, some kind of a friendly roll. That hit the, hit, hit the <laughs> rim, uh, but not the backboard, about uh, three or four times. Boom, 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 and, and dropped in. Macy, a 5'9 senior, averaging 6.5 points. Leads the team with 2.5 assists. Second free throw rolls through. Threw it from a 40% free throw shooter to 1,000% there. 17 to 6. Dowling's lead is now 11 after having a 15 point lead at one point. Now we got uh, a substitution come in there, Steve? Or they just. No, I, 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 didn't, I think maybe a, a sub came in for uh, Urbandale. Okay, we'll catch the lineups here as Gipple's in for Dowling. It's Gipple Bowles. Now a long three. Up and no good by Tobias. And the long rebound out to Dowling. And here's Bowles with it to McVeigh. So it's. McVeigh, Tobias, and Wishman, the three guards, with Bowles and Gipple in the posts. Here's Bowles with it. Down the left side, shot off, no good. They tried to draw the charge, did Umplin, and the rebound out to Urbandale, and down court with the left hand, layup good, and that's Heller with all six of Urbandale's points. Give the uh, free throws there to uh, Gaskell, but yeah, she has six out of eight. Yep. Ella McVeigh in the paint with two. McVeigh off to a great start on her senior night. Eight points, 19-8, to eight, Dowling by 11. Yeah, I stand correct. Heller has six field goals, or six points all from the field, and the two free throws by Gaskell. Good half-court perimeter defense here by the Maroons again. Now they're trying to set Heller up, trying to get a ball screen for her. A little dribble out, drive and kick. McKenna Cole in there, number one for Urbandale. She played the latter minutes of the first quarter and playing now. This is Kua with it. Tries to get underneath to Umlin, and the ball loose in the floor. It's stolen away by Tobias. Hey, good hustle play there by uh, Margaret. Into the hands of Bulls and right back to Tobias. This is a Dowling team that really doesn't have a point guard. They have three gals that can handle the ball and McVeigh, Tobias, and Wishman. Here's Gipple with it. Emma cut off, gets it out to McVeigh. She won't shoot the three, and now we've got three seconds in the lane on the Maroons. They caught somebody in there, and a turnover yeah. over to Urbandale. Coach Meyer was asking uh, Ella to just keep that thing swinging from side to side. Wishman appeared to be open in the corner, and uh, we just didn't recognize her. All right, Urbandale with the basketball. They go left to right towards the north basket here at the Dowling Gym, wearing their road red uniforms with uh, blue trim and numbers. A long three, no good by Heller, and that goes out of bounds, and that'll be Dowling basketball as Heller came up short after... Hitting her first three field goals. McVeigh did a good job running at the shooter and uh, caused a little bit of inter interference with that attempt. At halftime, we'll have Dowling Boys head basketball coach Michael Connor visit with us, preview the game with Urbandale later on in game two of our doubleheader. Corner three, it's up and no good by Tobias, but weak side rebound comes out to Dowling. The Maroons, another possession here, Steve. Yeah, they've done a good job so far this in the first half of getting cr crashing the offensive glass. 
So of course, while we're visiting with Coach O'Connor, the uh, dance team will perform for Dowling. as a long three up and no good. Rebound Umlin. Uh, so we'll see that at halftime. And then the, uh, the cheer squad will have their senior night recognition. So a lot of things going on even at halftime. And then between games, the Dowling boys seniors will be recognized. Now the ball goes out of bounds and a timeout on the floor. And I think this will be a 30 for Dowling. 30 yep. second timeout for the Maroons. 430 remaining here in the second quarter. Dowling 19, Urbandale 8 here on Iowa Catholic Radio. The Jayhawks come in with a record of 3 and 6. Dowling girls with a record of 8 and 4, and a number 9 ranking in Class 5A. And Steve, let's take a look at the top uh, 10 teams in Class 5A. Johnston is the number one team, although number two team is Waukee, and the Waukee Warriors with a sweep last night as Waukee and Johnston played. Uh, Waukee, number two, defeated first number one Johnston 58 40 over at the Waukee Gym. So you go figure out their series. They, they both both teams win on their home on the other's home court. Yeah, that's something else. But uh, <laughs> Waukee avenged both the boys and the girls avenged earlier season losses, and those those boys and girls teams uh, are, are top of the rankings for for both uh, sure both sets. Waterloo West is third, Southeast Polk fourth, and Ankeny fifth. Those two remain the same, fourth and fifth with Polk and Ankeny or Centennial rather. Iowa City West is sixth, Cedar Rapids Washington seventh. Cedar Falls, eighth. Dowling is ninth, and Valley at number 10. Now here's Umlin from a, a shot from the mid post, no good. Ball tipped out of bounds by Gipple. And then 11 through 15 has Roosevelt at number 11. Iowa City, City High at 12. Davenport North at 13. Sioux City East cracks the top 15 in at number 14. Indianola is 15. And dropping out is Ankeny. The Hawks were at number 12, and they have fallen out of the top 15. Of course, the girls use that as a barometer. The top 16 teams are either the one or two seeds in respective regionals. They do a good job of bracketing it out, and then they fill in from there geographically. And now a long three up and no good by McKenna Cole. The rebound out to Dowling. In the front court for the Maroons is Tobias. She works the right side. It's Tobias, Gipple, McVeigh, and Wishman along with Lexi Bowles. With it is Tobias. She dribbles baseline. It's cut off nicely by Umlin. Ball loose on the floor. It's picked up by the Jayhawks. And Gaskell with it in the front court. Maroons have gotten a little stagnant against that zone here in the second quarter. Well, it's gotten better. That's what's happened. Here's Heller, a pull-up jumper. Good. Kelsey Heller with eight first-half points to lead Urbandale. And it's 19-10. to Dowling with a nine-point lead. Heller has all four field goals for Urbandale. The two free throws were by Gaskell. Now a long three by Gipple is no good. Rebound Umlin. Meredith Umlin, 6'2", senior with a rebound. And now Jayhawks running transition. It's tipped out of bounds. Good hustle that time by Maddie Wishman of Dowling. Looks like uh, Sarah and Julia Moore will check in for the Maroons along with Olivia Bailey checking out Wishman. Emma Gipple and Margaret Tobias for the Maroons. Not quite a full line change there, Steve. Close, to, close it. to it. Three. Hockey came to mind yeah. when I saw it. Three out, three in, and now ball tipped out of bounds. Urbandale inbounds it. They lose it. It'll be Dowling basketball. Iowa, Iowa Wild Hockey, their home opener is tonight. Excellent. They're taking on a Texas team, 7 o'clock faceoff at Wells Fargo Arena. There are having limited fans, and you know, I, I grew up kind of a Buccaneers fan because yeah. that's all we had was Des Moines Buccaneers, yep. just not too far away from Dowling and in Urbandale. And now they added the, you know, the AAA of hockey. These guys uh, will play in the pros, and their home opener was tonight after a delay. Here's McVeigh, a three, it's no good, but a jump ball call. Bailey sneaking in behind. Thank you. 
I'm Dr. Katie here at Exemplar Care Urgent Care, the Des Moines Metro's first 24-7 urgent care. That means here at Exemplar Care, we're always here. If you want to get tested for COVID, you can simply just go to our website and sign up. Um, we offer different types of testing for whatever your needs are, and we offer it in whatever situation you find yourself. Whether it's you have symptoms, whether you don't have symptoms, whether you have a family get together, whether you're actually traveling again. Here at Exemplar Care, we have really found ourselves an expert in testing for businesses. You can go to our website, exemplar.care, and fill out contact information there. But really what we can offer businesses is the ability to stay open, stay safe, and stay COVID free. In addition to being tested for COVID, we also do everything we can to make this as safe of an experience as it can be, whether you have COVID or you don't have COVID. We want you to feel safe getting the medical care and the treatment that you need. Exemplar Care Urgent Care will open officially February 15th, and we are excited. We are gonna be the first 24 seven urgent care here in the Des Moines metro area. That means it doesn't matter what time of day it is, we are here for you. Exemplar Care Urgent Care, we are located at 7300 Westtown Parkway, that's just off Jordan Creek. Do and hopefully they can give us a little bit of energy and a little bit of juice to get the game going. That's what you want to see, energy and juice. That goes a long way. Well, next week, Coach, uh, it doesn't get any easier. Centennial comes here on Tuesday. I don't want to go too far ahead, but uh, Johnson comes here a week from tonight. I know it's Urbandale night, but the, you, you finished with the girl boy doubleheaders next week. But they're at home. They're home games. Yeah, they are. Um, I know what lies ahead. I. We're trying to really focus on tonight. tonight. We, we need to get a win. I'll let you um, do that then. <laughs> we've, uh, we've played some difficult teams here the last three times out with Waukee and, and Ankeny and Polk and have been kind of up and down with, with our performances at times. We thought we were very, very good at times against Waukee and maybe not our best against Ankeny and then thought we did some great things on, on Friday against Polk. So we've got to find a level of consistency in our performance and our competition. Um, in order to help us really succeed here in these last two weeks of the season. The well, boys, 4A sub-states are out. Des Moines East, North, Lewis Central, Urbandale Valley, and Dallin. Those are your six, and you guys are going to vote on them uh, Sunday night to see who gets seated where. I'm guessing Valley will be the number one seed just looking at this, but everything's up for grabs. And uh, best of luck with that because we'll know the brackets sometime next week, I'm guessing. Yep, I think tonight's outcome will determine a lot. I think if, if we can win tonight, we could... I think we could push for the one seed. We beat Valley. That's true, um, you did. I mean, I think that has to count for something. Now, if we got the two seed, I don't think any of us would complain because of our record. But, yeah, um, we'll see what happens, and we're just focused on tonight and see if we can play good basketball. OC, thanks for coming up. Enjoy senior night and, uh, and their families, and thanks for all you do. Yeah, thank you, guys. Michael Connor, the Dowling Boys coach. We'll take a break and come back. Here on Iowa Catholic Radio on CISN.TV, Dowling 19, Urbandale 10, the girls' contest, back in one minute here on Iowa Catholic Radio. Hi, I'm Chris with Fireplace Superstore. Fall's upon us and fireplace season is here, and you need a new heat glow, high-efficient gas direct vet. These are ideal for your new construction project, for your remodeling project, or for removing your old wood-burning fireplace and replacing it with a new heat and glow, high-efficient gas direct vet. Come see us today at Fireplace Superstore, 10820 Douglas in Urbandale. Central Bank opened its doors in 1877 and has been proud to call Iowa home ever since. For more than a century, our family-owned business has worked hand-in-hand -hand with friends and neighbors across the state to make their dreams a reality. Come visit us at our new location on Hickman and Waukee and see how Central Bank can make, can make it happen for you. And we are back here at the Dowling Gym, second half beginning. 19 to 10 is our score. Dowling with the lead over the Urbandale Jayhawks. Mark Amadale alongside Steve Devinney. Want to thank uh, Michael Connor, the Dowling boys basketball coach, in his 15th year and his 15th senior night as they will be game two of our doubleheader as Dowling had the ball first. Maroons 
ended up with an uh, offensive foul. Now Urbandale with the ball and a putback up and good by Meredith Umlin. That's her first basket of the ball game. Umlin coming in averaging eight points, has two right now, and it's 19 to 12. And the Jayhawks outscoring Dowling six to two, Steve Deveni in that uh, second quarter. Maroons uh, struggled in the second quarter after Urbandale made a stronger effort to deny the ball to Lexi Bowles. And uh, they're going to have to see if they can make that adjustment coming out of halftime. Yeah, Bulls will sit down. She has two fouls. She just picked up her second foul within about 30 seconds of uh, starting the second half. 19 to 12, Dowling. Urbandale with the basketball. They're switching baskets. They go right to left towards the north basket here, rather the south basket here at the Dowling Gym. Jayhawks in their road red uniforms, blue numbers, white trim, long three. I mean, a very long three. It's no good by Ma Macy Gaskell and rebound out to Dowling. Moves down in transition. They get in the corner to McVeigh after a dribble drive that time by Maddie Wishman. It's tipped out of bounds. So the Jayhawks get back. They're handling Dowling's transition. And they've went to this 2-3 zone early in that first quarter, and it seemed to make a difference after Dowling jumped out to a 17-2 lead at one point and led by a 17-4 score at the end of the first quarter. Now whistling a foul on Urbandale. I think it'll get Heller for the foul. And that is her second foul. Urbandale's leading scorer with two fouls. Heller with eight points. Low scoring affair, isn't it, Mark? It is. One of the lower scoring games that we've seen this year for the Maroon Girls. Urbandale two for two at the free throw line tonight. Dowling also two for two along McVeigh for three. And boy, is she hot. That well, she, she had an point. offensive putback, so that was a two coming off of a long rebound. Ah, and now the other way we go. Heller with the shot off the glass. Good. She has 10 points. Did I just say it was a low scoring game? I apologize for that. That's going to pick up. You just <laughs> So McVeigh with 10 points, and it's 21-14, Dowling by seven, 520 remaining. Here's a shot in the lane, no good, rebound Dowling. Here's Gipple with it. Skip pass over to her teammate, Tobias, for three. It's no good, rebound Urbandale. 510 remaining here in the third quarter. On the baseline, Heller with the shot, no good. Umlin offensive rebound on the weak side. Keeps the uh, possession alive. Pull-up jumper by Urbandale, no good. That was Odding with the miss. Rebound Gipple. Emma in the front court for Dowling Catholic. It feeds underneath and a shot up and rolls through. Maddie Wishman with her fifth point. And it's 23-14. Dowling's lead back up to nine after leading by 15 in the first half. Excellent dribble drive there on the baseline by uh, McVeigh and found the open cutting Wishman. 23-14 Dowling. Urbandale with the ball in the lane, a shot up and they're gonna wave it off. No good by Macy Gaskell, drew the foul. And they're going to get McVeigh for her first foul of the night. So Julia Moore will check in for Dowling. She replaces Maddie Wishman. And they rule the ball out of bounds, so Heller will throw it in for Urbandale underneath her own basket. Here's Umlin with it. Her reverse pass nearly stolen away by Moore, but Urbandale retains possession in the lane. And now a steal by Dowling. Gipple with the steal. She dribbles in the front court. Gipple with a team leader with 22 steals coming in, make it 23, her number. Yeah, she's had a good year in all facets, offensive rebounding, scoring, defense. She does a little bit of everything for the Maroons. Four minutes remaining, third quarter, 23-14 Dowling. Gipple, her shot blocked by Umblin. <laughs> Meredith Umblin with her 15th block on the season. Her and four, 14 coming in, I'm sorry. Steve. And, and then a jump ball uh, right back to it. Uh, Held ball possession will go arrow in favor of the Jayhawks. The Maroons will go full court, man-to-man -man, uh, full court press as Kua throws it in to Gaskell. Gaskell who runs the point for the most part for Urbandale in their offense. Plays catch with Kua. Now over to Odding. They lob it inside to Umlin, and we got a whistle and a foul on Gipple, who was guarding the post that time in Umlin, and Gipple will pick up the foul for Dowling, her first. Yeah, Umlin did an outstanding job of developing, uh, gaining position down there on the block. And she pinned Gipple down deep, and there was just no way to get around her without fouling her. So Olivia Bailey will check out of the Dowling lineup, and Bowles back in. So Riverdale inbounds the ball, top of the key. 
with it is Gaskell. Nearly had it stolen away by McVeigh, and she taps in the backcourt. Now a near steal by Gipple. Jayhawks with it, and now finally a steal by Julia Moore. They were dangerous. and little helter-skelter. It was, but Maroon stuck, stayed with it. Now here's Gipple with it. Back to Moore in the baseline, guarded by Umblin. Feeds inside to Gipple. Her shot too strong, and she drew the foul, and Umblin picks up the foul for Urbandale. Excellent give and go there by the Maroons. Gipple with the interior feed to uh, Julia Moore, and then a quick basket cut, and Moore was uh, able to pick her up, and now Gipple will have two from the line. Emma Gipple, averaging 11 points, leads the team with averaging 9.2 rebounds a game. And the first free throw is no good. Gipple has not scored tonight. Keep in mind she came off the bench on senior night. Emma, just a 5'10 junior, missed with both free throws and a whistle and a foul on Dowling, loose ball foul. I think they're getting McVeigh. I believe that's right. That'll be her second foul, and that'll be team foul number four on Dowling with 3-12 remaining here in the third quarter. 23-14, the score remains. Dowling over Urbandale in this girls contest. A boys game to follow. It'll be, it's senior night. Dowling girls basketball team has already been recognized before the game with all their seniors, and now they work underneath, and a shot up and no good by Umlin. Gets her own rebound, and now they force a jump ball as Umlin was battling Julia Moore. Nice hustle play there by Julia Moore, but a, a, a nice job also by Umlin. Missed her first attempt, but scrambled to the uh, offensive glass and then was tied up by uh, Julia Moore. Maroons will take possession. Under three minutes remaining here in the third quarter. Very low scoring third quarter. Now Moore with it, dribble drives, leaves it for McVeigh. Out to Tobias for three, it's no good. And a power, a rebound by a Bowles and a power dribble, and she has it stolen away by Urbandale and Macy Gaskell. Good defense there by Gaskell. Down court, Jayhawks. They work it inside Kua. Her shot no good, gets her own rebound. Second chance opportunity for the Jayhawks. Odding for three, and it's good. Peyton Odding with her first three of the night, her 10th of the year. Excellent ball movement there. Three, four passes in a row without the ball hitting the floor, and wide open result. Uh, a wide open basket there by Otting. And the Maroons 15 point lead now down to six with, as we approach the two minute mark. 23-17, Dowling over Urbandale. Now a turnover by the Maroons. Urbandale in the front court, here's Kua. A couple players set to check in for Dowling at the next dead ball. Here's Heller with it, left wing, dribbles in the baseline, cut off by McVeigh. Now we got traveling on Umlin. So turnover against the Jayhawks as Olivia Bailey and Maddie Wishman checking in for Dowling. Sitting down will be Emma Gipple and Margaret Tobias there, Mr. Davini. Yep, Maroons have just not been super sharp since that first quarter. Maybe took the foot off the gas a little bit and now are having trouble regaining any momentum. Dowling with the ball. McVeigh a shot with the left hand. Good, and she hit the deck after she uh, launched the shot. And Ella with 12 points tonight. Boy, athletic move there down the left side of the lane. And finish with the left, her weak hand. Yes. Excellent play. McVeigh with 12 points. Dowling's lead is 8, 25 17, a minute 20 left in the third quarter. Here's a shot up and no good. Rebounded by Dowling. And that's Moore, and they say she traveled as her feet left her. I got out from underneath her. And turnover back over to Urbadale. And Coach Whitney Lawler wants a timeout. Looks like a 30 second timeout for the Jayhawk girls. And it is. So we'll keep it here alongside Steve Devenny. I'm Mark Amadale. 25 17, Dowling Girls leading Urbandale here on the Maroon Senior Night from the Dowling Gym. Jeff Piggott, our studio producer. And I'm going to go back to last night's game. There's a Thursday night CIML girl boy doubleheader. And of all the uh, top two teams in girls basketball in 5A, and the top three teams in Class 4A boys basketball, and Waukee, a doubleheader win at Johnston by the identical score, 58-40 in both games. You ever that, have that happen? No. <laughs> that, that's a rarity. Yeah. But, so, uh, and, and with that win, Waukee avenges both losses they had at Johnston uh, back on January 8th, which would be about a month ago. Did you say that uh, Waukee lost the games at Waukee and they went on the road last night and won? And won, won at yeah. Johnston. That's impressive. Yeah, so they, and, and some of that was they kind of had to reschedule. They moved it up a day so the, uh, Waukee girls could make up their game with Lincoln tonight as Lincoln had an opening. So lots of things going on as all that uh, transpires. The pandemic scheduling. Yeah, COVID scheduling. It's, yeah. And it's a last-minute scheduling. We just oh, get used boy. to it. Now, for instance, tonight Lincoln 
The girls are at Waukee. The Lincoln boys are on the road at Ottumwa. There's a shot in the lane no good by Urbandale. And Bowles with another rebound. She might be getting close to a double-double with that. As she has six points and probably more rebounds. And now a steal. Bailey loses it. A steal by Umlin. And gets it to Macy Gaskell. And she dribbles in the front court. Gaskell down the lane. They're going to whistle for the travel. Little crossover dribble. Excellent move. Uh, Gaskell's questioning the official on the uh, traveling call, but heads back on the defensive end and is going to have to live with it. Derek Clausen, Terry Harding, and Dan Wilson are three-man officiating crew tonight. You know what, Steve? I always said if they do a good job in the girls' game, we'll keep them around for the boys because if they, if they don't, then it's Tom Wilson and a few others that may have to get out there and call the, uh, the shots. <laughs> I don't think we want that. Here's a three-pointer by Moore. It's no good. Rebound Urbandale. One and done is Dowling. Eight-point Maroon lead. Final 10 seconds of the third quarter. Here's Kuo with it. Uh, gets it out top. Three-pointer no good by Gaskill. Rebound Dowling. They'll have to push it. Here's McVeigh with four seconds. In the corner it goes to Wishman. Out to Bowles for three at the horn. It's no good. And we've come to the end of the third quarter with the score. Dowling Catholic 25. Urbandale 17 along with Steve Devaney. I'm Mark Amadale from the Dowling Gym. Back for the fourth quarter in one minute on Iowa Catholic Radio and CISN.TV. To everyone who believes in competition and... ...good sportsmanship, who knows it's not about the trophies or the medals, but rather the lessons... For those who understand, it's not whether you win or lose, just that you give your best. So go ahead, place them up, take the field, have fun, and play. For the experience, for the memories, for the love of the game, Shields. with a 25-17 lead. Umblin for three, top of the key for Urbandale. It's no good. Ball slapped around and retrieved by Gaskill. And the Jayhawks will have another opportunity. They outscored Dowling 7-6 in that third quarter. There's Gaskell with it. Works the left side. Cut off nicely by McVeigh with help from Wishman. And now underneath is Heller. Her shot off the glass. Good with the left hand. The basket is good. And a foul on Dowling and an opportunity for an and one here. And they're going to whistle the foul on Dowling as Margaret Tobias. That'll be the 15 foul on Dowling. Two team fouls for Urberdale as we begin the fourth quarter here, Mr. Deveni. Yep, Heller's done a really nice job all night of dribble penetration. Beating, Heller, beating the Maroon defenders off the dribble consistently. Yeah, Heller makes the free throw for her 13th point. And now Dowling immediately down court. Looks like they got Heller for a block. And that'll be her third foul. Third Mc team foul on Urbandale. Yeah, State. McVeigh was trying to be aggressive there with the baseline drive. So Jayhawks tonight are three for three at the free throw line with Heller's free throw. Dowling underneath the bowls are shot up and no good. And are they going to? Looks like Umlin maybe, 45. Yep. Yep, they're going to call her for the foul. That's her second. He Okay, the basket didn't go. The referee counted the basket. He no, no, no. Good, yep. so. That's right. The basket did not go. It was in and out, and so Lexi will have a pair. Bowles with six points all in the first quarter, and she misses the free throw. Dowling two of four at the free throw line going into the fourth quarter, make it two of five. And the foul. Was uh, that was on Umlin, number 45. So her, Umlin. Her second. Yep. Maroon's Umlin mark. Has, Umlin uh, has two, and Heller has three fouls. Second free throw, no good. Go ahead, Steve. No, I was just going to say. After taking a 17-2 lead in this contest, the Maroons have had only eight points in the last two-plus quarters. Yeah, 25-20. Dowling over Urbandale here in game one of our girl boy doubleheader. And it's Heller down the lane. Her shot no good with the left hand. Rebound Gipple. Now she has the ball stolen away. Tipped away by Heller right into the hands of Kua. Now Gaskell with it in the front court. Kua right 
Right side dribbles down the lane and travels with the basketball. Couldn't come to a jump stop soon enough. Turnover back over to Dowling. Emma Gippel with some pretty good defense there and uh, caused the turnover. So Dowling outscored Urbandale 17 to four to start the first quarter. The Maroons were outscored six to two in the second quarter and we're outscored seven to six in the third quarter. So that sets up our fourth quarter, 25-20, Dowling by five. Maroons with the basketball, playing catch in the perimeter. It's Ella McVeigh, Margaret Tobias, and Maddie Wishman, along with Lexi Bowles and Emma Gipple, the five on the floor for Dowling. Maroons going left to right towards the north basket. And good defense. Now, Urbandale is they've, staying they've, man Yeah, right they, now. they've extended the zone, but it's still a zone, but the the point guard has come out a little bit higher to contest. Now corner three by Tobias is good. The Maroons look for that soft spot and found it. Margaret Tobias with her first three points of the night. Yeah, that's a big basket. Extend the lead from five to eight and uh, six minutes to go here. 28-20. Dowling leads Urbandale. Maroons' biggest lead was 15 points. And in this series, Dowling leads 26-2, to two, getting back to 2006. And now... Kua for three, and it's no good, but Umlin with the rebound underneath, and it's stolen away. Umlin's pass stolen away. Here's Dowling with the ball. Down court, Tobias. She's cut off and double team. Gets to McVeigh. Over in the corner to Wishman for three from the left wing. Good! Maddie Wishman with her second three of the night, her 26th of the year, and she has eight points on senior night and a timeout on the court. And we'll take a break. With 5.32 remaining here in the fourth quarter, Dowling now with a 31-20 lead over Urbandale here on Senior Night at the Dowling Gym on Iowa Catholic Radio and CISN.TV. 35 years in the automotive industry, I had the opportunity to build on the American dream, just like Henry Ford did over 100 years ago. Introducing the all-new DeArmond Ford Indianola. Like Ford Motor Company, we're a family-led business guided by our core values of hard work, trust, honesty, and integrity. People drive to Indianola to buy Fords. The all-new DeArmond Ford. DeArmondFord.com. Built for America, sold by DeArmond Ford Indianola. Iowans know that winter means snow, ice, and freezing temps. Severe weather can make the roads downright dangerous. Truck Equipment Incorporated has the toughest work equipment that can stand up to the harshest conditions. Look for Western brand snow plows, quality you can count on. Buy new or utilize our repair services. We'll order new parts for same-day pickup or delivery. And now you can shop from home with our virtual showroom. Go to truckequipment.com today. And we're back out of the timeout as both teams now with three timeouts remaining, Urbandale and Dowling here at the Dowling Gym, 31-20 Maroons. And the Jayhawks now running their offense against Dowling's man-to-man. -man. Umblin underneath and draws the foul and two free Free throws coming for Meredith Umlin, the 6'2 senior, battling in there against Bowles, and I think they're going to whistle. They're going to whistle Gipple for the foul. Her and Bowles were down there trying to double team. Yeah, no, nice aggressive play. She leaned in and went strong to the hoop and drew the contact. And the first free throw by Umlin is good. Meredith, a 58% free throw shooter on the year, and hits the first free throw. That is her third point tonight. Comes in averaging eight points. Leads the team with seven and a half rebounds and 14 blocks. Second free throw, no good. It's now a 10-point game. Down court comes Dowling and a shot no good by Tobias. It's blocked by Umblin and a whistle and a reach-in foul on the rebound by Umblin. She'll go to the free throw line. Lexi They're going to whistle the foul on Tobias for okay. second. Okay. Well, I didn't see that. Yeah, she reached around when she didn't get the – her shot was blocked. She came around her and – Team seventh. Yeah. So for the rest of the way, now the uh, Jayhawks. Jayhawk girls will be in the bonus. Yeah, they're trying to get off this 21-game snide to Dowling. Last win for Urbandale over Dowling. His free throw is good by Umlin. She now has four points. Was back on February 12th, 2010. That's 10 years ago, 11 years ago, excuse me. It was a 43-40 Urbandale win here at the Dowling Gym. You said it was senior night, Mr. Devenny. Is that right? For my middle child, Betsy Devenny. And uh, she had been out most of that year with a broken ankle. I and remember she came that. Back and it just wasn't a very good night for the Maroons that night. It certainly wasn't. As Umblin makes both free throws, she has five points. 
31-23, and the Maroons are going to take the air out of the ball with 440 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Dowling by eight. And now they're going to force Urbandale out of their zone and match up. Well, that's the intent. I don't know if it's going to happen or not, but uh, they'd like to pull them all the way out and co uh, force Coach uh, to, to, to get him into a man. Here's Gipple at the free throw line. Doesn't shoot. Looks to Bowles inside. Well defended that time. Looks like Kua is on Bowles right now. Lorraine Kua, the 5'10 senior. McVay playing catch with Tobias. Urbandale for now is content to let the Maroons run some clock. Down eight. There's Gipple, and she nearly loses it and then finally does. Stolen away by McKenna Cole, who was inserted into the lineup by Coach Lawler on that last uh, timeout. Here's, Here's Cole. Over to Umlin. Drives against Bowles, won't shoot it. Gets it underneath to Kua. Her shot off the glass. Good. Right around Gipple. She snuck in from the weak side, and Emma Gipple did not uh, see her coming. Kua Ended up wide open in the lane. With her first two points tonight, the 5'10 senior gets the start and has her first basket here in the fourth quarter. Dowling's lead at six. Gipple underneath. And her shot up, and they're going to call her for changing her oh, pivot foot. It's no good, and that'll get Coach Meyer up. They wave it off, traveling on Dowling at the change of the pivot foot. Yeah, I, I don't, um, that's a tough one. So Dowling will come out with full court pressure. Team fouls, Dowling with seven, so Urbandale in the one and one. Dowling, or Urbandale with just four team fouls. 3.20 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Dowling by six here on senior night. And now Cole, an off balance shot, no good. Umlin with the rebound, out hustles, bowls for it. And she's nearly tied up, and we're going to get a foul, reaching foul on McVay. Mm. So Ella will pick up her third foul. Eighth team foul. Urbandale's going to be shooting again. Umlin will go to the line. As I mentioned, she was a 58% free throw shooter coming in. And tonight she's three of four. Substitutions for Dowling. Julia Moore will replace Bowles. So Lexi will sit down. Mark, last time down, uh, we'll have to see how it what happens next possession for the Maroons, but it appears that Urbandale left the zone and went to man. First free throw good by Umlin. Tonight's game on Iowa Catholic Radio is uh, brought to you in part by our good friends at Ashworth Vision Clinic, Construction Professionals, and Mercy One. Along with Steve Devenny, I'm Mark Amadale. Jeff Pickett, our studio producer, on the radio side. Second free throw no good and fight for the rebound. And Gipple comes away with it. And Dowling now with the basketball as they get into the front court. I want to thank Anna Bassett, our CISN.TV producer here in the balcony with us here at Dowling, along with uh, Reese Reb. Reese, our camera person. Love that. All right, here is Moore with it. 2.45 remaining. Dowling by five and just trying to take time off the clock. Low-scoring high school class 5A game. I mean, last week we were in the 70s. Yep. And here we are. Now Gipple dribble drives and leaves it for Wishman, and they kick it back out. Here's Tobias with it. Splits the defenders with the left-hander shot. Might have been partially blocked by Umlin as Gipple gets the rebound. Her put back with the left hand. Good. Tough move that time by Gipple. That's her first two points of the night, believe it or not. Came in averaging 11, and it's 33-26. Wishman with the steal. Interception right there. Nice play. And Dowling with the basketball. Good call there. Mr. Davidi and now Coach uh, Lawler of Urbandale say, hey, we've got to come up and guard him now. Maroons lead by seven, and we've got a whistle and a foul on Urbandale. Lorraine Kua will pick up her first foul. Yeah, that's a good foul. You know, they still have two fouls to give, or one to give, before the Maroons are back in the bonus. We've got a 30-second timeout called by Dowling. The Maroons will have two left. We'll keep it here with just under two minutes remaining. Here in the fourth quarter, Dowling 33, Urbandale 26 here on Iowa Catholic Radio. Pretty good ball game. Last time you and uh, Joe Stacy called the game over at Urbandale. I understand Dr. Watson put you way up in the bleachers where you both belong. Yes. And uh, in the rafters. In the rafters. 65-34, Dowling win there. But, uh, you know, Urbandale coming off a win on the road at Ames earlier this week, and they're coming in riding high. They defeated Ames 63-48. You don't do that too often, but... They knocked down 15 threes on the road, and they that's, haven't quite got an, that here. That's an amazing number, but the uh, give the Lady Jayhawks credit. You know, they got down early to the Maroons and uh, just kept chipping away, and uh, Dowling hasn't been quite as sharp tonight as we've seen them in recent uh, 
nights. A week ago, they went toe to toe with uh, sure. Southeast Polk, another highly ranked team. The Jayhawks come in, they've lost four of their last six games as the Maroons have won five of their last seven games. And McVeigh on senior night with the basket, her 14th point of the night, and it's 35 26, Dowling by nine, a minute 45 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Good assist there by Gipple on a give and go. You know, Gipple hasn't scored tonight, but she's been. Helping in other areas, rebounding. Yeah. No, she just got that offensive put back just a moment ago, I yep. think. Rebounding, yeah, it's her first basket. Yep. And she went 0 for 2 at the free throw line. And now Umblin underneath, her shot up, and good! It went off the top of the backboard. Now the officials are going to huddle. Yeah, I they, think they, it hit the yeah. dead ball area, so it, I don't think they're going to count the basket. They might wave that off. They're going to huddle it, here. As it hit the support. If, if they saw it hit the support, they, minute, may not, they may not have seen it. Minute and a half remaining, Dowling by 9. The basket by Umlin went good, was good after hitting the basket support. They're going to wave that off because the officials uh, motioning two free throw attempts. So Bowles picks up her third foul, and you're right, two free throws coming. They did not count the basket. That's the uh, double bonus, I believe. Oh, no, no, it's not the double bonus, but that's a, a shooting foul. Yeah, so two free throws. 19 foul on Dowling. And Umlin tonight. Who's, who's had, she's four of six, the free throw line. She'll get two more here. Our officials, uh, Derek Clausen, Terry Harding, and Dan Wilson got it all sorted out. First free throw, no good. Tonight's game on Iowa Catholic Radio brought to you in part by Kemen, Dental Associates, and Construction Professionals. Along with Steve Devenny, I'm Mark Amadell. Stay tuned, we have the post game show following tonight's game. We'll, rec we'll recap scoring. Second free throw is no good, so Umblin missed them both. Rebound, Dowling. Minute 20 remaining in the fourth quarter. Dowling's lead nine. Runs with it. This is Tobias with it, and she draws the foul. They might get Umblin for this. We'll see. I believe that's correct, yep. And they do. That's her third. And that'll be the 16 foul. Yep. Next time, the Maroons will be shooting if that happens again. 16 foul on Urbandale. Herbendale, I think, committed two fouls in that first half. Here's Gipple with it, going against Umblin, and she'll back it out. Dowling going to be content with getting a layup or going to the free throw line. Here's McVeigh. Is Dowling running their dribble weave. So McVeigh and Wishman go back and forth with the pass, and a whistle and a foul on Urbendale. Looks like that'll, that'll be Gaskell, number 23. And that'll send McVeigh to the free throw line. And on Macy, that's her first for Urbendale. Team foul number seven of the Jayhawks. And McVeigh tonight, this will be her first time at the line. She has 14 points on senior night. The young lady going to the University of Michigan to play softball, hits the first free throw. She's had a good night here on senior night. She's been giving the Maroons a lot of energy in addition to some scoring that she's, she's not necessarily known for being the leading scorer, but she is tonight. She certainly is. Second free throw good. 16 points for McVeigh. And we've got a timeout on the floor. And they're going to keep this a 30. Nope, they're going to move it to a full. They'll move it to a full timeout. We'll take one ourselves. 63 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter here at the Dowling Gym on their senior night. 37-26, Dowling leading Urbandale by 11 here on Iowa Catholic Radio and CISN.TV. Aggressively, relentlessly, that's what you can always expect, even when faced with the unexpected. It's a service we take seriously, providing comfort in the rain, tools to help you save, a helping hand along the way, and from a safe distance away, delivering the energy you need while going the extra mile. Regardless of the times, our team remains committed to you. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto. I'm excited to tell you about our new lifetime oil change plan. When you purchase our plan, you'll never have to pay for an oil change again. If you get a different car, simply transfer the plan over. If that car's oil needs are different than your original plan, just pay the difference. It couldn't be simpler. You won't have to worry about inflation or prices going up. Give us a call at Westside Auto Pros to get details on the lifetime oil change plan. And remember, when I say lifetime, I mean your lifetime, not just your cars. Amazing now we're back here at the Dowling Gym. The timeout went from a 30, or from a full to a 30, 
as we went to break. And while we were away, Urbandale with the basketball and a foul on McVeigh. That is her fourth for the Dowling young lady as both free throws good by Gaskell. She now has four points. Full court pressure by Urbandale. Dowling 37, Urbandale 28. Now a steal in the backcourt by Kua. Feeds Heller and her shot up. And they're going to wave it off. It's no good. An offensive foul on Heller. So Kelsey will pick up her fourth foul, Steve. What a flurry there. Yep. Uh, you know, we had a bad angle at that. Looks like the referee indicated that Heller extended her lead arm. But uh, Urbandale bench didn't like the call. All right. Dowling breaking the press. McVeigh in the front court. Gets it to Wishman. 35 seconds remaining. They, in, they feed the inside pass to Julia Moore, and she'll go to the free throw line. That'll be the 18 foul on Urbandale. And let's see who they call this on. Looks like uh, Kua, number 33. So Lorraine Kua with her second foul. And free throw's coming. That is the 19 foul on Urbandale. Dowling has committed 10, so Urbandale's in the double bonus. Moore's free throw, no good on the one and one. Ball saved from going out of bounds, but they say Umblin stepped on the baseline. So Moore, this is the front end of the one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, Emma Gipple will check out and get another senior in there for Dowling Catholic, and that is Paige Hobbs. Nice to see. 5'10 senior. Was on Coach Ron Gray's girls golf team here at Dowling, and she was recognized. Pops underneath her shot up and no good. They set a play up for her, Steve. Moore with the rebound. Her put back up and good. Julia Moore with her first basket of the night with 18 seconds remaining. And Dowling's lead is 11 in a low-scoring game. 39-28 Maroons. Urbandale with the ball. Here's Heller with it. Left wing to Otting for three. It's no good from the left wing. Moore with the rebound, and she draws the foul. I think Gaskell might have reached in, or Umlin, and she'll get two free throws. Tenth team foul on Urbandale. And they'll get Gaskell with her second foul with 3.9 seconds remaining. And the Maroons are going to extend their streak over Urbandale to 22 in a row, dating back to 2010. That's unbelievable. You don't, you'll see that too often, Steve. I'll say that. I mean, Maroons are 27 and two against Urbandale, dating back to 2006 when they started keeping the records. Moore's free throw is no good. Second one coming. Tonight's game in Iowa Catholic Radio, brought to you in part by Construction Professionals, Ashworth Vision, and Dental Associates. Second free throw, good by Moore. And Urbandale inbounds the ball, and that'll do it. As Gaskell will. Attempt the last shot. It's no good. 40 to 28, the final. Dowling holds off a very pesky but improved Urbandale squad as the Maroons improve their record to 9 and 4, ranked 9th in Class 5A. The Jayhawks, they will drop to 3 and 7 overall under, head, under first year head coach Whitney Lawler. Now, for Urbandale, up next, they travel tomorrow to Marshalltown for a 2 o'clock girl boy doubleheader. Then next week, they host number 11, Roosevelt, on Tuesday. They play a makeup game against uh, road rival down the street, Hoover, Urbandale Hoover, at the Durbandale Gym on Thursday. That's a 5.30 start. And then next Friday night, a week from tonight, they travel to 10th-ranked Valley in a girl-boy doubleheader. So some of the games remaining for the Urbandale Jayhawks. For Dowling Catholic, just two regular season games remaining for the Dowling girls. They'll host number five, Ankeny Centennial, next Tuesday night. February 9th, and then a week from tonight, they will take on number one Johnston. And both games begin at 5 o'clock. We'll be on the air at 445 with our friends from CISN.TV. So Maroon's season about ready to come to an end. And, uh, Steve, they've only got 13 games in right now. They'll probably get no more than 15 as the way yeah. it looks. Well, regular season before COVID was 21 games for both the boys and the girls. Correct. So, you know, with the pandemic and all the health scare right there before Christmas after the big Thanksgiving you know, the, I, I, I would think that the kids would feel fortunate to get that many games in and hopefully uh, a chance to still play some postseason. It appears that's going to be the case. And you got more people coming into these games than you did before Christmas, and they've started to open up the, the attendance to uh, a few more people. So it's nice to see. And uh, even though it's a little bit shorter season, fewer games, uh, the main thing is everybody gets a shot still at the postseason. And... Uh, 
I'm sure the Maroons are looking forward to that. Absolutely. We're going to take a break and go to our post-game show here on Iowa Catholic Radio and CISN.TV as they will have uh, senior night ceremonies going on for Dowling Catholic. That will continue with the uh, boys seniors being introduced with their families once they clear the gym and, and do the uh, uh, sanitation as they do between games. And they'll bring on uh, the Dowling boys team. And, of course, uh, they will be recognized for uh, all their seniors. And uh, we will pick that up on CISN.TV along with our pregame show. Again, the final in the girls' contest. It was uh, Dowling, 40, Urbandale, 28. Along with Steve Devaney, I'm Mark Amadale. Back with the postgame show coming up here on Iowa Catholic Radio and CISN.TV. Hi, I'm Chris with Fireplace Superstore. Falls upon us and fireplace season is here, and you need a new heat and glow high-efficient gas direct vet. These are ideal for your new construction project, for your remodeling project, or for removing your old wood-burning fireplace and replacing it with a new heat and glow high-efficient gas direct vet. Come see us today at Fireplace Superstore, 10820 Douglas in Urbandale. Central Bank opened its doors in 1877 and has been proud to call Iowa home ever since. For more than a century, our family-owned business has worked hand-in-hand -hand with friends and neighbors across the state to make their dreams a reality. Come visit us at our new location on Hickman and Waukee and see how Central Bank can make it happen for you. Back here at the Dowling Gym alongside Steve Devaney. I'm Mark Amadale. Post game show following the Dowling girls' win over Urbandale 40 to 28. So the Maroons sweep the season series uh, two games to none as the Maroons winning at Urbandale 65 34. A month to the day back on uh, January 8th in a game you called with uh, Mr. Joe Stacy in my absence. And the Maroons come away with a low scoring win here in Class 5A after, you know, looking back at some of the other scores. Last Friday night, 63-58, Southeast Polk defeating the Maroons. Uh, Maroons defeating Ankeny, 69-50. And tonight, 40-28, to Steve. And uh, you got, you got to give uh, hats off to uh, Coach Lawler and the uh, Urbandale Jayhawks. They have come a much different team than the first time the Maroons played them. And they're just going to be a team that's getting better. And that played into Dowling tonight. That, that stopped their uh, their breaks. And you go back to your keys to the game, and one thing uh, – Urbandale had to do was stop Dowling's transition. Yeah. No, I mean, it's easy to, uh, it's easy to uh, stop transition when you're making some shots on your own. And the, the pace of the game tonight was just a little bit slower. I mean, the zone definitely played a part in that. The Maroons were not able to figure that out. Uh, Lexi Bowl and uh, Emma Gippel, the two leading scorers on the year tonight, I think were held to... Uh, Six points and two points respectively. So that's, you know, when you're scoring 65-70, you're going to get some more scoring from those two people. And uh, tonight that was not the case. So give Urbandale credit with that zone. Uh, on the flip side of that, Urbandale didn't, was not able to make threes like they did up at Ames the other night when they, when they had uh, Just one. 15 threes. Yep. They had one tonight is what I have them for. I don't know what you got in your book, but I yeah. have them for one. Yeah. And no, that was biotic. Yeah, it's just amazing. So, like I said, you know, at the out, outset of the game, it's uh, every night's a different situation, and uh, this is a much, much different ball game, the pace of play and the scoring than what we saw a month ago. The Maroons still uh, managed to come out on top to run their record to, what, 9-4 and four now, Mark? That is correct. Dallin 9-4 yeah. and four overall, ranked ninth in Class 5A with two games remaining against uh, Centennial next Tuesday, and Centennial comes in ranked fifth, and Number one or number two, Johnson, depends what the girls' union does with their ratings next week, next Friday night, and uh, be the last girl-boy doubleheaders of the season next week. You, you, you can call a win ugly if you want to, but it still counts as a win. It does. No matter <laughs> if you score 100 points or only score 40. It still counts as a W, <laughs> and that's exactly what the Maroons got tonight. Well, Dowling puts seven players in the scorebook tonight as they, they made five threes. Let's take a look at the scoring for Urbandale. As the Jayhawks' record falls to 3-7 and seven under uh, first-year head coach Whitney Franker Lawler. It was Whitney Franker when she played. I 
I, I have a hard time when I saw her. I said, Coach Franker. And she said, no, I got married, got two kids, two boys, and uh, she's doing a great job. Of course, uh, it's Mark Bethke and Kevin Klein you got to worry about. Those two oh, assistants, yeah. uh, you know yeah. them very well. Uh, Bethke, the longtime boys basketball coach here in central Iowa, teacher at Urbandale, and Kevin Klein helping out at uh, Grandview with uh, – uh, the late uh, Gary Smith, uh, they do a great job, and she's got two fine coaches. As much as I like to kid them. Oh, wait a sec. This will be archived, so they'll be able to see this. Uh, <laughs> never mind. Never mind. Go, go easy, Mark. Yeah, I got to. I got to watch. Everything's archived. All right, so for Urbandale, they're led by Kelsey Heller. She had 13 points tonight. Eight of those were in the first half. And then rounding out scoring Meredith Umland tonight with six points. And she was at the free throw line. She went four of eight at the free throw line with uh, two points, uh, two-point field goal for her six. Four points for Macy Gaskell, a basket. And Our next honorary 24 
Seniors being recognized for Dowling here tonight, Mike. It's amazing. I, you know, thinking back on how many senior nights, Mark, you and I have done, <laughs> I, I don't think we've seen this many seniors uh, wow. on one night for, for Dowling boys. It's just amazing. Ten guys, and you can tell that they're a close-knit team. I, I was listening to some of the quotes as the, uh, the boys, their favorite memories, and almost all of them, one of their favorite memories is team dinners or going out with the sure. team you know, after games, and, and that's, that's great. I mean, that's, that's what it's all about. Yeah, some of those include team dinners and also the bus rides. You know? right. A lot of stuff happened on the bus rides. You know, did you your did you your dad drive the yellow bus? I uh, forgot. Oh, those, yeah, those yeah. were. It. <laughs> we, luckily, when we left the morning, Christian, I left the yellow buses behind. And I the nice thing is, we got the travel buses, I, I the wondered, charters, when we went to Lincoln. I wondered about that, and uh, of course, the uh, Dowling seniors, uh, led by Adam Bialzak, Simon Daniel, Mikey Chase, Jack Gretke. Sam Hughes, Adam Andrew Lynch, Matt Riedel, Jalen Moses, Ryan Riggs, Dylan Schmidt, and some of those, all five, five of those, ten, will start. And uh, tonight, no, Coach O'Connor was up at the halftime of the girls' game and talked about that, and it's like, you can't start, usually has about five or six seniors, and you just, tonight he can't start all ten, so he's going to pick five, and uh, Dylan Schmidt will be one of them, and uh, hats off to him and his parents uh, uh, as Dylan gets to start tonight. Matt Riedel will, will, he will dress because he's coming off COVID protocol, but he will dress and may not play. It depends on how it, how it goes. But uh, uh, Simon Daniel, Bialzak will get a start tonight, and as will Gretke. So hats off to them, and you know, that's a memory. I know they have regular season games left, but I think we go back a year ago, Mike, when you could look at uh, some of the other sports, they didn't get their senior night. So you're seeing a lot. I saw a lot of senior nights in, in December because I have the CIML master schedule. And I looked and said, senior night? They had some in December, not knowing if we continue to play through the COVID, and thankfully we are tonight. Yeah, it's amazing. I remember uh, WHO, I think, or maybe it was KCCI, one of them had a story on the, the Hoover football team had their senior night, the first game, because yep. then all of the, you know, the CIML Metro schools, yep. their football season was lost. And, you know, to have senior night in, in August, it was just amazing. And uh, it, it's, it's great that th these guys get to celebrate that tonight. And it's fantastic, Mark, that we've got a basketball season that we're in the middle of. Yes. And, and I know there's been some hiccups. Obviously, Coach O'Connor was down for a little bit. Uh, you talked about Matt Riedel. Uh, Coach Wilson was, was yeah. absent for a little bit. It's good to see him here. So uh, everybody's doing their part and trying to make it through. And uh, so far, so good. Yeah, and that's a blessing. You, you move through this, and uh, you forgot me. I was that's down right. for two weeks. You <laughs> How know, can I forget you? Well, last <laughs> time last time you did Dowling Urbandale was at the Urbandale Gym with Joe Stacy, and you guys were up in the rafters, probably even further back than what Dr. Watson puts me at. I, I think I think Bill's goal is to somehow have me broadcast from the parking lot at some point. But uh, I, 
<laughs> you know, it, when you look at Urbandale's record, Mark, they've, they've got three wins, and one of those is Dowling. Yeah. Uh, and I, I was looking back at that game. You know, so that night, Dowling shot 34% from the field. And from three, they attempted 27 three-pointers and shot 18%. I mean, it was Ugh. just mind-boggling. They go six for 11 at the foul line, and and Urbandale actually tied uh, Dowling with with rebounding. I mean, they each had 26 rebounds apiece, which there's no you know Dowling has a height advantage on at every position. So it was just one of those perfect storm nights. It was. And uh, Dowling couldn't buy a bucket and uh, ended up getting down by seven in the first half and ended up losing uh, that game. 50, 53-45. Yeah, they end up having to uh, shoot their way back, and of course you launch a lot of threes when you do that, make that comeback, and that's kind of skews those stats, but uh, you're exactly right, and hats off to uh, head coach John Smits in his uh, sixth year here at, at Urbandale, and tonight he's going to be without his leading score. Both leading scorers will not play tonight. Drew Dykstra injured his ankle for the third time this year, and he is out. He is uh, Urbandale's leading scorer, the uh, six-foot senior guard, he is out tonight. As uh, we mentioned a little bit about uh, Riedel, Matt Riedel will dress, has not practiced a whole lot. I think he had a workout today, but he's over. He's within COVID protocol, so he's not at full strength. He's been out 10 days, but I think you might see Riedel come in in special situations, you know what I mean? If it's a certain time in the game, you may see Riedel come in, but it'd be very little. So both teams basically without their leading scores tonight, Mike. Well, I thought Dowling stepped up uh, their, their guys really had a great effort against Southeast Polk, and, and a lot of different guys stepping up in absence of, of Matt Riedel. And a heartbreaking loss for Dowling. I mean, it was an amazing comeback to send that game to overtime. And, and then uh, Southeast Polk ended up uh, pulling away there in, in the overtime period. But uh, I, I even mentioned this on the broadcast, Mark. You, you never like to there, – there are no moral victories. You know, you're not happy with – Right. Uh, you know, how, uh, that you, you competed. But uh, it was good to see, compared to the night before, where we had just watched uh, Dowling just struggle. Uh, and so ha having that performance against Southeast Polk, I think, gives them something they can build on, maybe some momentum. Dowling's got to get on the right side of one of these. They've, they've, they've had a little bit of a losing streak here, and we've got to get one, uh, and tonight's a perfect opportunity to do it. Well, you look at the schedule the Maroons play, and it's, uh, you know, it's dog-eat-dog, dog, basically, because... They're playing a very tough schedule, as everybody is in the CIML. Uh, and you're playing them not once but twice. So if you're ranked, like many of the Dowling opponents are, the Waukees, the Johnson, you play those twice with well, their second and third ranked teams in the state. And, oh, you draw a non-conference team like Ankeny Centennial. That's Dowling's opponent the one and only time next Tuesday night. You got Valley. You're supposed to have them twice where they're in your sub-state along with the regular season. Southeast Polk, you've already faced them twice. And then Ames, a team that Dowling beat, they're ranked 10th. So... Ames, Southeast Polk Valley, Centennial, Johnson, Waukee. Those are five of the top ten teams in the state, uh, along with uh, here in Central Iowa that the Maroons have faced. And, uh, you know, you mentioned the, the night uh, at Urbandale where the Jayhawks just shot lights out, played very well, and Coach Smith's, uh, you know, out Coach O'Connor that night. Yeah, if you don't bring your A game or if you don't come to play, Mark, you're going to get beat. I mean, that's just how it is in the CIML. So uh, I really expect a better effort. I, I expect... Uh, a lot of motivated seniors with this Dowling lineup. Sure. And uh, I, I think they're really going to get after it. All right, had, had a whole week, Mark, to uh, yeah. no game on Tuesday. So these guys are ready to go. Yeah, and I think we are too. We had the whole week off, no game on Tuesday. I don't know if your wife gave you the, the look that I got. She said, you're not, you're not anywhere tonight? And I said, why? You're going to have the best movie that you can find, and, and I'm going to be here to enjoy it. So I, I stayed home. So that's how it works. We're going to take a break here on our pregame show, the boys game, along with Mike Swaim. I'm Mark Emmerdale. Glad you could join us for Game 2 here on Iowa Catholic Radio and CISN.TV. We'll take a break and come back with more pregame from the Dowling Gym. To everyone who believes in competition and good sportsmanship, who knows it's not about the trophies or the medals, but rather the lessons learned. For those who understand, it's not whether you win or lose, just that you give your best. So go ahead, lace them up, Take the field, have fun, and play. For the experience, for the memories, for the love of the game, Shields.
are back here at the Dowling Gym alongside Mike Swain. I'm Mark Amadale. It's pregame going on for the boys contest, Dowling and Urbandale. As uh, earlier tonight, we had the Dowling girls with the uh, win, 40-28 to over Urbandale to improve their record to 9-4 and four in the ninth ranking and the number nine ranking in Class 5A. Urbandale falls to 3-7. and seven. And Coach Swain, let's, uh, let's kind of get this started here. It's uh, senior night for the Dowling boys. That's always important. They were recognized. Uh, earlier and now the warm-ups and uh, both teams without their leading score and I'll make sure I get Anna's attention as we could go right to our uh, keys to the game uh, for Dowling or and, and Urbandale. I've got and keys Ur for both. Yeah. So we'll start with the keys to the game for Urbandale. How's that? And uh, Presented by DeArmond Ford and Yanola, a family-led business guided by their core values of hard work, trust, honesty, and integrity. Check out the all-new DeArmond Ford and in Indianola at DeArmondFord.com. Mike Swing will start with the Urbandale keys to the game. Yeah, I think Urbandale has to limit their turnovers. Last game uh, against Dowling, Mark, they had 15 turnovers, and that allowed Dowling to get back in that game. Dowling was able to cut it to one late in that fourth quarter, and then Urbandale eventually pulled away. So limit turnovers, and then they've got to do what they did that first game, and they've got to match Dowling on the glass. They may not have to win every rebounding battle, but compete on the boards. Last time, both teams ended up with 26 rebounds apiece. Dowling has got to have a better effort than that. And then for Dowling, their keys, uh, they've got to get the ball inside. Mark, 27 three-pointers attempted by Dowling, and you shoot 18% in that game. You can't have that. You've got to take your threes by getting the, the kick out, inside out looks, and then they've got to get to the foul line and convert. You, you look at what happened against Southeast Polk the other night. They go 12 of 15, get to the line, did a great job of converting. Right. That kept them in that game. Against Urbandale last time, only 6 for 11. That's not going to get it done. they got to get at least double-digit uh, attempts and makes from the foul line. And those are your keys to the game presented by DeArmond Ford Indianola. Family-led business guided by their core values of hard work, trust, honesty, and integrity. Check out the all-new DeArmond Ford in Indianola at DeArmondFord.com. Thank you, Mike Swain, for that. And uh, I'll tell you what, you, you look at a game, anytime somebody plays each other twice and some teams are going to be playing each other three times when you start looking at substate possibilities. And by mm -hmm. the way, boys' substates in Class 4A will be seated this Sunday as uh, all the substate, there's eight of them, have their substate Zoom meetings. And the coaches are, I don't know if they were doing this when you were there, but they kind of haggle over who's the number one seed, who's two. And it, it ends up being kind of like uh, – what goes on at the state capitol and the lobbying yeah. and all that. Uh, you, you know some people that kind of do that. Yeah, I do. That's kind of what happens. Now, that was not the case, but it was all based on a, <laughs> on wins and points system when uh, when we were doing it. So it was much more official. It wasn't sort of the, uh, yeah, let's put them here, and I vote for this guy here. And uh, I thought it changed. We're not, we're not talking about voting for all conference teams. We're talking about seeding teams. Yeah, That's there, there could have been some issues <laughs> in the Metro Conference. I with uh, this. That would have been uh, that would have been some interesting conversations with the coaches <laughs> that we used to run around with. Then. I could just see you guys at these meetings and just trying to contemplate who's the number one, who's the number two. <laughs> that had a, that would have been hilarious. But uh, that's what they do. It'll happen Sunday. So. Uh, next week, and hopefully maybe by Tuesday when Dowling hosts Ankeny Centennial here, we'll have some of the 4A brackets. The girls' regionals do not come out, and I think they're coming out next week. Uh, they'll have everything bracketed out. So something to look forward to. They're doing it later because we have technology, and they already have the sites picked out. So that's part of it, Mike. But uh, always interesting to see what bracket you're in, and it, it just it, it becomes very curious, I've always said, and uh, that'll be no, no different this year. Yeah, no question about it. So, you know, this becomes just from uh, a, a seeding standpoint, uh, just adding another win to Dowling's win total uh, would help. Uh, every little bit's going to help, especially if you can maybe host a game, you exactly. know, in that first round and uh, maybe have to avoid the, the number one seed in that second round. So, Yeah, that's all, that's all the case, especially uh, for Dowling is uh, Valley right now has the better record, but Maroons own the head-to-head -head over them. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, the, the second team with the best record is Lewis Central. And uh, the Maroons do not play them, although they beat them last year. That means nothing. But uh, Lewis Central has the second best record. Then it's Dowling and Urbandale and North, all with about the same amount of wins. East has yet to win a game. Um, and I, I think that's it. That's the six teams. So they're all gonna, all those coaches will be on a Zoom meeting hack, uh, haggling over it. And, I'd love to watch that. Uh, maybe we can, you know, you hear about Zoom meetings being hacked. Maybe you and I can figure <laughs> out a way to get the password 
They won't let us do that. They won't let us do that. I think there's something else going on Sunday, Mark. I, I, there's another event in this country well, that's th- – This uh, is early. Yeah. I, I, By the way, are your Packers playing? I was going to ask all the Packer fans around here, where is Mr. Maindering? Oh, and, that's uh, – uh, well, see, I, I specifically wore this then for you. If you're going to take a shot at the Packers – We'll, we'll go ahead and talk about your uh, – Yeah, don't put that on TV either. Yeah. Uh, Anna, please don't well, put that on TV. I, no. I mean, I, I believe your Duke Blue Devils are on the verge of an NIT birth. <coughs> so. uh, I, I just heard from uh, Coach O'Hare, and he kind of mentioned that, uh, but his <laughs> North Carolina Tar Heels aren't doing much better. <laughs> oh, by the way, they play tomorrow night. They do play tomorrow night. Yeah. <laughs> Must see TV. We're going to take a quick break, come back with the starting lineups. It's Dowling and Urbandale. And extra stuff tonight, folks, uh, here on Iowa Catholic Radio and CISN. TV along with Mike Mike Swain, not Maddie, Mike Swain. I'm Mark Amadale back with the starting lineups from the Dowling Gym here on Iowa Catholic Radio and CISN.TV. 35 years in the automotive industry, I had the opportunity to build on the American dream, just like Henry Ford did over 100 years ago. Introducing the all-new DeArmond Ford Indianola. Like Ford Motor Company, we're a family-led business guided by our core values of hard work, trust, honesty, and integrity. People drive to Indianola to buy Fords. The all-new DeArmond Ford. DeArmondFord.com. Built for America, sold by DeArmond Ford Indianola. Iowans know that winter means snow, ice, and freezing temps. Severe weather can make the roads downright dangerous. Truck Equipment Incorporated has the toughest work equipment that can stand up to the harshest conditions. Look for Western brand snow plows, quality you can count on. Buy new or utilize our repair services. We'll order new parts for same-day pickup or delivery. And now you can shop from home with our virtual showroom. Go to truckequipment.com today. And we're back here at the Dowling Gym. Mark Amadale alongside Mike Swain as we get set for the starting line. to be introduced on the court, Dowling and Urbandale. And if you uh, joined us late, it was uh, game one. The Dowling girls defeating Urbandale 40-28. to and here's the starting lineups for game two. Let's welcome the Urbandale Jayhawks to visitors tonight, wearing their uh, road red uniforms, white numbers, a little bit of that blue trim. The head coach is John Smiths in his sixth year, 41 wins, 81 losses, assisted by Clay Field King and Mark Bishop. And the Jayhawks tonight with a record of three and seven. And they're down their... Uh, Starting point guard and leading scorer Drew Dykstra out with an ankle injury he suffered the other night against Ames. So they will start this lineup at one guard. Dylan Sams, a 5'10 senior. He'll wear number 10. The other guard is Grayson Smits, six foot junior. He'll wear number 14. And the third guard will be Jack Wadier. Wadier, a 6'2 junior. He'll wear number 24. At one forward for Urbandale, Grant DeCrife, 6'3 senior. He'll wear number 23, and at center, Kirby Smiths, a 6'6 sophomore, wearing number 52. So the Smiths are brothers, Grayson and Kirby. Grayson the junior, Kirby the sophomore, along with Jack Wadier, Grant DeCrife, and Dylan Sams. A five on the floor, they will start for the Urbandale Jayhawks. They have come in losing four of their last six games, averaging 45 points on offense and giving up 54.4 points on defense. And for Dowling Catholic, the Maroons come in with a record of 5-7 and seven in boys' play. They've lost four of their last five games. And the Maroons will start this lineup tonight, a senior night. One guard, Dylan Schmidt, a 6-foot senior. He'll wear number 2. The other guard is Sam Hughes, a 6'1 senior. He'll wear number 12. And the third guard is Simon Daniel, a 6'2 senior. He'll wear number 22. One forward for Dowling will be Adam Bialzak getting the start tonight, a 6'7 senior, wearing number 44. And the other senior center is Drack Gretke. Gretke, a 6'10 senior, wearing number 14. So it's Dylan Smith, Sam Hughes, Jack Gretke, Simon Daniel, Adam Bialzak for head coach Michael Connor in his 15th year. 222 wins, 130 losses, assisted by Nick Wagner and Jimmy Nahas. Dowling comes in averaging 56.2 points on offense. They give up 57.8 points on defense. That's the tail of the tape there, Mike Swain. Your final thoughts before we tip this thing off. Well, I think uh, Dallin's got to get off to a good start. I think you're going to get a motivated effort here by, by these seniors. You know, you look at uh, Dylan Schmidt and uh, uh, Adam Bialzak. So it's a great opportunity for those guys to start their this game on senior night. It certainly is. And our officials tonight are Derek Clausen, Terry Harding, and Dan Wilson. And they officiated the girls game earlier. 
And run away. The ball poked in the backcourt and saved by Dylan Smith. And Dowling will start the ball with the ball first after Bialczak won the tip. How about that? Good hustle. Urbandale into a half-court zone trap here, Mark. And, and a they turnover. Force a turnover. Yeah. Yeah, turnover as they say Hughes stepped on the sideline at half court. And Urbandale and Coach Smith's <laughs> throwing everything at him. Yeah, Dowling's going to be man to man primarily. Did see a little zone a couple times this season, but for the most part, this team has been man to man. Urbandale, and they're all red uniforms with white numbers. Ball kind of leaked over Grayson Smith with a dangerous pass that time. Here's DeCry. They worked the right side. The backdoor cut layup good by Dylan Sams. Uh, that's, for Urbandale. That's just a great cut, and backside defense just falling asleep there, and Urbandale's going to stay in that zone here, it looks like. How about that motion offense ran to a tee by the uh, Jayhawks to start it yeah. off? Two good, to nothing, Urbandale, down with the ball. Simon Daniel on the left uh, baseline, and he draws the foul. Tried to dribble into the lane, and Sams, who made the first basket. Oh, they're going to whistle Whittier, Wadier rather, Jack Wadier, who gets the start tonight over Drew Dykstra, who's out with an ankle injury. He picks up the foul. Uh, last time these two teams met, Kirby Schmitz was pretty much in foul trouble the entire game, Mark. He was sort of a non-factor. Here's Daniel with it. Simon, a backdoor pass on the baseline. That is uh, Gretke, and Jack wasn't looking for it. Urbandale with the steal. They come down court to cry for the steal. He'll launch the three. It's short, and it goes out of bounds, but saved by Urbandale right into the hands of Dowling and Gretke. Here's Bialczak with it. Spins on the baseline and a little up and under. Good! How about that, Adam Bialczak? Averaging a point all year and a senior on senior night scores from the baseline. That was just a great move to be able to keep his balance mark as he pivoted around baseline side to go right over Kirby Schmitz and get the roll. We're tied at two with six and a half minutes remaining. First quarter from the Dowling Gym. Urbandale going left to right towards the north basket. And Dowling going towards the south basket. The Maroons in their home white uniforms, maroon numbers and trim. And Urbandale in their all red with white numbers. Dowling stays man to man. They work the baseline. This is Smits working against Bialczak. And a long three up and good by the Jayhawks and Grayson Smits. Well, he had 12 points the last time these two teams met. And a couple of threes off to a good start here for Urbandale offense. 5-2 Jayhawks as the Maroons get the ball. Dylan Smith, the pass inside, stolen away by Urbandale. With it is the Jayhawks, and a shot up and no good by Wadier. We got a whistle and a foul off the Dowling rebound on Urbandale. Well, there was a lot of contact on that. No call. Fortunate for Dowling. I thought the shooter, Wadier, got bumped, but... Uh, he did, too. Yeah, he did, too. <laughs> Nonetheless, it'll be Dowling's ball. And Smith commits the foul. That's his uh, first. Team foul number two. And Adam Bialczak will check out the 6'7 senior who scored, as will Dylan Smith, the 6-foot uh, senior for Dowling. We'll both check out. And now Ryan Riggs in the lineup. He gets it on the baseline. He flushes it home as Gretke found him with a dart pass. Well, that's just a great job against that zone. They were very patient and found the hole. That time, Ryan Riggs on the baseline with a dunk. So Riggs checks in as does Mikey Chase into the Dowling lineup. Both did not start, giving way to uh, Dylan Smith and Adam Bialczak. And it's 5-4 to four, Urbandale, five minutes remaining. Here in the first quarter, over Dowling, and the Jayhawks with it, left to right in front of us. Uh, here's DeCry trying to go through a ball screen. Ball tipped in the backcourt, and they're going to give it to Urbandale. Tipped out of bounds by Dowling, they say. Well, that was taking a page out of the Urbandale playbook. They're overplaying the perimeter. There was a ball screen set that time by Kirby Schmitz, and, and uh, Ryan Riggs jumped that with Simon Daniel. Really nice jump, almost got the turnover. Urbandale with the basketball. This is DeCry with it. On the right side over to Sams, wearing number 10. Leaves it for DeCryf, a head fake, and now drives in the lane, can't get a shot off. Back out to Sams. Jayhawks trying to attack Dowling's man-to-man -man defense. Pass underneath by Wadier. Gets it to Kirby Smiths, and it's stolen away. Smiths' pass stolen away by Dowling. Runes in the front court. Mikey Chase with it to Hughes. 
Riverdale stays man to man. Hughes in the corner to Daniel. Simon for three. Up good. And Dowling takes its first lead of the contest. Seven to five over Riverdale with a corner three by Simon Daniel. Well, it's amazing what good defense will lead to on the offensive end. And that time, a great defense possession leads to a good offensive possession. Now underneath, and a backdoor pass by DeCryfe, and he feeds Kirby Smith for the score. Nice play there. And we've got a whistle. And officials now want to talk something over here with just under four minutes remaining. Tied at seven. Yeah, Coach O'Connor's wondering, they, do we have an inadvertent whistle? Yeah, I think so. They, they're granting Schmitz a timeout. And there's, boy, that's, that shouldn't have happened because Dowling got that ball out quickly. And we've got a 30-second timeout. That's what becomes official. And I think they charged it to Urbandale. They did. So we'll keep it here. Tied at seven, Dowling and Urbandale here on Iowa Catholic Radio and CISN.TV. Mark Amadil along with uh, Mike Swain tonight. Ashworth Vision Clinic, Construction Professionals and Dental Associates are three of our sponsors here. New poll was out earlier this week. Cedar Falls, the number one team in Class 4A. They remain number one. I know you have a lot to say about that because you were <laughs> barding for Waukee. They're the number two team. And last night they knocked off uh, Johnston. Over at the uh, Johnston Gym. So both those uh, schools have played each other twice, Johnston and Waukee. And number two, Waukee winning at number three, Johnston. 58-40 was the score in both games. Nobody, who, who can figure that out in the girls and boys <laughs> score? So Waukee, a girls and boys win at Johnston. Same score, 58-40 in a special Thursday night game. And now a corner three by Dowling out of the timeout. Mikey Chase is good. His 10th three of the year. And Dowling up three here, Mike. Well, a nice kick out that time. Ball went inside to Riggs, kicked back out to Chase. Nobody on him, able to knock down that wide open jumper. Grayson Smits gets the top of the key. Into the lineup is Nolan Bethke for Urbandale. His dad, Mark, the, one of the assistant girls coaches this year. And underneath, DeCryfe with a reverse layup. Good, and that was looked like off balance, but DeCryfe found a way to get it through. Yeah, left-handed going away from the basket, gets it to fall. And now top of the key, a three-pointer no good by Dowling. And that was Mikey Chase with the miss. And now we got a whistle and a foul and a rebound, apparently. Yeah, that was a little bit more of a difficult shot, Mark, trying to catch and transition and then put that shot up. The other one, he had his feet set square to the basket, able to knock it down. Fouls on Dowling's uh, Mikey Chase. Or check that, Simon Daniel with his first foul. First team foul on Dowling, two on Urbandale. Grayson Smits. And Jack Wadier with a foul each. Jayhawks with the basketball. Top of the key, number 33 is Nolan Bethke. Gets it over to his teammate, and that's to cry for three. It's no good. Rebound Dowling. Maroon's in transition. Here's Simon Daniel after Chase gives him the outlet pass. Underneath the rigs, he kicks it out to Jalen Moses, who checked in in the last dead ball. Top of the key, it goes to Simon Daniel. Urbandale stays man to man. Daniel down the right side in the corner to Moses. And Jalen for three, it's good. Jalen Moses with his first three of the night. That's his seventh of the year off the bench. And he had that energy against Southeast Polk last Friday night, Mike, with 12 points yeah, off the bench. He was in double digits, Mark, and really had a nice offensive game. I thought he, it was the first time he really looked comfortable yeah. offensively and off to a good start here. All right, Bethke's shot is no good. Rebound Dowling. Maroons lead it 13-9. And now we've got an offensive foul on Dowling as... Maroons maybe one extra dribble by uh, Sam Hughes. He fed Riggs with the pass, but they rule Hughes committed the charge, and that'll be his first, Sam Hughes' first foul. Good job by the Jayhawk yeah. defense. They're going to give that to Mikey Chase, but uh, you're right. That was a nice job that time. I think it was DeCryf who uh, got that charge, and good defense by the Urbandale Jayhawks. So both teams with two fouls each. Under two minutes remaining here in the first quarter. Dowling 13 and... Urbandale 9 here in Iowa Catholic Radio from the Dowling Gym on CISN.TV and Iowa Catholic Radio. Mark Amadale joined by Mike Swain tonight. Urbandale being very patient in their offensive set. Dylan Sams with it right side. Guarded by Chase. Coming off a ball screen is Sams. That's Kirby Smith setting it up. Rolls the basket. They don't see him. Wide open. And now Riggs has him. Top of the key. This is Smiths. Grayson Smiths won't shoot it. Gives it to DeCryf. Guarded by Simon Daniel. Simon usually gets the best offensive player's assignment on defense for Dowling. Well, Urbandale being very patient, but Dowling playing great defense. Now we got a whistle and a foul called on Dowling. Minute 14 remaining. 
Mikey that's Chase. Be, gets a, yeah. That first foul on Chase, third team foul on Dowling. Mike? Well, I think they I think they gave that last foul to Chase. I think that's his second. That's why Coach O'Connor got uh, Chase is going to go to the bench. Okay, and now they have Carson Brown in there, yeah. number 32. And underneath, this is Kirby Smiths, and he leans his way and shoots and scores right around Riggs. Smiths with his fourth point. That was a nice job using that body to shield Riggs from being able to block that shot. Smiths, a 6'6 sophomore. Riggs on the baseline, and his pull up jumper good. A little baby hook there right over Smiths, and those two are kind of having a conversation down court. Riggs with his. Dallin, fourth point of the night. Dallin going to a zone here, Mark. First time we've seen that tonight. 40 seconds remaining in the quarter. And now on the reverse pass by DeCryf, stolen away, or rather by Wadier of Urbandale, stolen away by Dowling. And the Maroons have it. 30 seconds remaining in the quarter. And the Dowling by four. Can they hold it for one? Looks like they're going to attempt to. It's going to be Urbandale ball when we come start the second quarter. But so far, a pretty good quarter by Dowling. Here's Jalen Moses in the corner. The Maroons kind of go with their... Four out and one in, and that's Riggs kind of hanging around the lane. And now with the basketball is Sam Hughes. Dribbles down the right side. Leaves it for Moses on the baseline. Three-pointer, good! Jalen Moses with a corner three on the right side. He's got six first quarter points, and we've come to the end of the first quarter with the score. Dowling 18, Urbandale 11. We'll take a break here on Iowa Catholic Radio and CISN.TV. Relentlessly, that's what you can always expect, even when faced with the unexpected. It's a service we take seriously, providing comfort in the rain, tools to help you save, a helping hand along the way, and from a safe distance away. Delivering the energy you need while going the extra mile. Regardless of the times, our team remains committed to you. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto. I'm excited to tell you about our new lifetime oil change plan. When you purchase our plan, you'll never have to pay for an oil change again. If you get a different car, simply transfer the plan over. If that car's oil needs are different than your original plan, just pay the difference. It couldn't be simpler. You won't have to worry about inflation or prices going up. Give us a call at Westside Auto Pros to get details on the lifetime oil change plan. And remember, when I say lifetime, I mean your lifetime, not just your cars. Hey, we're back here at the Dowling Gym. Friday night high school basketball. Mark Amadillo alongside Mike Swain. Iowa Catholic Radio and CISN.TV bringing you the coverage tonight as we simulcast with our partners. And it's Dowling 18, Urbandale 11. Urbandale with the first possession of the second quarter. A corner three from the right side, no good by Grant DeCryfe. And the rebound out to Dowling and the Maroons. What a finish at the end of that first quarter, Mike. It was a great job by Sam Hughes penetrating and then just kicking out to Simon Moses, who's got the hot hand from three. Yeah, Jalen Moses again, his three-pointer, top of the key, it's no good. Rebound to Kreif and Urbandale. Grant in the front court, now picks up his dribble, and Simon Daniel all over, nearly had a five. Finally gets to Grayson Smits. And he gets it out top to Jack Wadier. Looks like Urbandale back to the starting five. Kirby Smits also in there, and Dylan Sams for the Jayhawks. And for Dowling. Uh, no, nice backdoor cut by Wadier. He puts up a shot up and good. A little off-balance shot by Wadier. Well, that was pretty good defense by Simon Daniel, but just a better move by Wadier there on the baseline. Yeah, kind of off-balance, and he threw it up, and, hey, something he shoots a long time, or shoots quite a bit. And now Riggs in the right block, spins, whirls, and puts up a shot. It's no good, but he drew the foul, and the foul will be on Kirby Smith. That'll be his first. Team foul number two on the J. Or check that. Team foul number three on Urbandale. Dowling with three team fouls. As we're underway here in the second quarter with 6.47 remaining. Dowling by five. Free throws coming for Riggs, who did not start tonight. He gave his position up to uh, Adam Bialzak, who got two points. And he hits the first three throw there, Mike. That's five points for Riggs. Uh, look who checks in the game. Matt Riedel uh, getting his first action here at the 6.47 mark. And second free throw good by Riggs. Now, Matt, we were told, will dress and may play limited minutes is what He's just coming off the uh, COVID protocol. He's out 10 days or more. And 
very limited in his practice. Depends what he did in his backyard because he was <laughs> school the first time today. Good to see Riedel in there, number 24 for Dowling Urbandale with the ball. Here's Sams on the baseline. His shot blocked out of bounds or blocked by Moses and then picked up by Smith and he puts it through. Kirby Smith with his sixth point. Yeah, just a nice little jump hook that it time. Was. And uh, Riggs, I thought I had a chance to get that block, but good play by Schmitz. All right, Riedel, a corner three to uh, Moses. It's no good. A nice pass by Riedel, but Jalen couldn't hit the three, and it's rebounded by Urbandale. Jayhawks to Greif underneath, thrown away by Riedel. That's that instant offense he has. I don't know how much, uh, many times he can go up and down the court, but we're going to find out. Here's Riggs in the baseline. Leaves it for Carson Brown. Three-pointer on the way from Hughes is in and out and no good. It's one of those Mike Swain missed shots <laughs> I used to see down here once in a while, way back in the day. Rebound comes out to Urbandale and Grant to Cray. All right, here's Sam's with it. They reverse it left wing to DeCryf. Top of the key it goes. Over to Grayson Smith. Now he'll leave it for DeCryf for three. Top of the key, it's no good. Rebound Riggs, and a foul will be on Kirby Smith. I think you said that happened the first game. Well, he's got two fouls here in the second time they meet. Well, Dallian has done a much better job, Mark, on the boards. Urbandale's got no offensive rebound so far, so that was a good block out by Riggs, forcing Smith to go over the back, and He's going to go sit on the bench with his second foul. Andrew Lynch in the lineup for Dowling. He replaces Riggs. Jalen Moses will sit down. And he's replaced by Carson Brown. So it'll be Hughes, Riedel, Gretke, Carson Brown, and Riedel, the five on the floor for Dowling. Here's Gretke with it, left wing. Top of the key it goes as Urbadale stays man-to-man. -man. And now... Here's Hughes, a shot off the glass. He misses no good. Lynch had the ball and got it tipped away in the rebound to Urbandale. Wadier with the rebound. Now a long three in transition. Good, and that is Grayson Smiths with the three. His second of, of the night. He's got 24 on the year to lead the team. Wow, that was a great shot. Just a quick release by Schmitz, and Urbandale has cut this lead down to two. Yeah, 20 to 18, Dowling. 4.50 remaining, second quarter from the Dowling gym. Maroon's trying for the sweep, and now underneath, Riedel leaves it for Lynch, a shot up, and good! Lynch was feeling the contact, but he made it go through, and I'll tell you what, Riedel set that all up. That was a great pass by Riedel, and a nice move by Lynch. And now in the lane, it's Dylan Sams, a shot off the glass, good. High arcing shot by Sams, he's got four points. 22-20, Dowling by two. This is setting up to be another exciting game here. We saw that last Friday night as Dowling went overtime with Southeast Pope. Carson Brown swings it over to the right side. Here's Riedel underneath to Lynch, and he puts it through. Wanted to slam it, but he couldn't. Wow, <laughs> another great pass, and good ball passing inside, and then finding Lynch down on that baseline. Good offense. 24-20, Dowling by four. Under four minutes remaining in the first half. A little 1-3-1 one zone here, Mark. From the Dowling gym, yeah, they did change. Now with the basketballs, Decryf. Gets in the lane to Bethke. His shot no good. Ball slapped around and into the hands of Smiths. This is Grayson. Gets to Sams over to DeCryfe. Back to Sams. Dylan with it. Won't shoot the three. Dowling stays 1-3-1. One, one. Carson Brown at the top of the zone. Swing it to the left side. This is Wadier. They're going to whistle Wadier for the travel. Wadier getting the start tonight for Drew Dykstra, who's out with an ankle injury. And Simon Daniel returns to the Dowling lineup as Hughes sits down. Mike? Mark, I like this changing defenses just to give a different look that time and forces the turnover for Urbandale. So. Well, you know as well as anybody, Mike, that if you change defenses, you've got to have all five knowing where their spots are. So if you go make man, miss zone, or something like that, all the kids got to realize that, and they did. And now Gretke for three. It's good from the right corner right over Grant DeCryfe. And Jack Gretke with his first three of the night, his 19th of the year, leads Dowling and made threes. 27-20, Dowling by seven. Jayhawks with it in the front court. They go left to right towards the north basket. And a foul called on Dowling. This will be on Carson Brown. That'll be his first and the fourth team foul on Dowling. Well, Dylan Sams is really good, Mark, at putting the ball on the deck and getting into that paint area. And he's, he can finish in there. He's, he's only 5'10", but uh, does a nice job of finishing, and that time a strong move to draw the foul. Riggs checks in for Dowling. Lynch will sit down. This will be Simon Daniel, Carson Brown, Matt Riedel, along with Jack Gretke, and Ryan Riggs. 
Riggs at 6'8", and Gretke at 6'10". Twin Towers in for Dowling. Now a long three by, oh, how about that? Grayson Smith for three, his third of the, the night, and he's got nine points from the left wing. 27-23 Dowling, Urbandale back on defense. Now a steal here, it looks like. The ball called between Riedel as he was battling and there was Sams and uh, DeCryfe who uh, converged on him, Mike. It was a nice double team. That was the same thing they did to start the game. Riedel got caught there, nowhere to go. And Dowling's got to bring a guy, you, you recognize that double, you got to bring a guy high, give your teammate an option. Carson Brown will check out. And checking in for Dowling will be Sam Hughes. Now to Simon Daniel, right side, Riggs on a cutter to Hughes, a shot up and good. Nice pass by Riggs who gets the assist to Hughes. Really good vision. That time they double teamed Riggs down low and Hughes just cutting to the basket right down the middle of the lane. That was a good offensive set for Dowling. The Maroons lead back to six, 29-23. Two minutes remaining here in the first half. Kristen Meyer. The head girls basketball coach at Dowling will join us at halftime following the Dowling girls win 40-28 to over Urbandale. Now Greta Key blocks the shot by Grayson Smith's out of bounds. It'll be Urbandale possession with a minute 49 remaining in the half here, Mike. How about both teams playing zone here? We just haven't seen a lot of zone by any teams this year, and both of these teams playing some zone early in this half. Well, don't you sometimes have to go deep in the playbook when you play somebody twice uh, in a season, and now... <laughs> Matt, Matt Riedel helped make that call. So <laughs> he can't be the first to touch it. Yeah, he's got he, a great point. He's got to establish position. and Yeah, that, that's, that's gotten uh, John Smith's up as the officials talk it over. Our officials tonight are uh, Derek Clausen, Terry Harding, and uh, Dan Wilson. And what happened is DeCryfe threw it in, and then he was deflected by Riedel, and DeCryfe was the first to touch it. Uh, and they're going to they're gonna switch the call. And, and they, they should switch it because DeCryfe was the second to touch it. Because <laughs> Riedel slapped it, and then DeCryfe stepped in. So I think that's where the clarification was. Nonetheless, Zerberdale basketball now pass underneath, and uh, DeCryfe. All right, we may now have another... Another overrule? Well, they're talking another about huddle. it. We have another I think huddle. Riggs thought that that went off of DeCryfe. Officials huddling up. This is the, they've all three had a, a visit here. And they're going to give it to Dallas. And switch the call. <laughs> yep. So that'll get Coach Smith. So we've got two switch calls in in less than 30 seconds. Mark. Call it overrule in the official. There you world. go. Overruled. Two, two overrules in 30 <laughs> seconds. I got Coach Smith's up at Urbandale, Clay Fieldkin, Mark Bishop. That to their disdain. They had an out-of-bounds play called, and they give it to Dowling. And now we've got a whistle and a holding foul on the Jayhawks. With a minute 28 remaining, Dowling by six. And a foul on Urbandale. Yeah, both teams with a couple fouls to give here with a minute 28. Sams picks up the foul, his first. Team foul number five in the Jayhawks. Four on Dowling, and Simon Daniel inbound the ball. Gets to Sam Hughes, over to Riedel, in the corner to Gretke, underneath the Riggs, left wing. Backdoor cut by Gretke, and he loses the ball, and I got to call a foul on Sams. Dylan blocked the shot by Gretke. He was ready to slam it home. He was. That was a nice move, just a, a pass along the baseline, and then Gretke with a good cut going to the basket and uh, draws the contact. Free throws coming for Jack Gretke, a 57% free throw shooter on the year. First one is good. Tonight's game on Iowa Catholic Radio brought to you in part by our good friends at Mercy One by Kemen and Construction Professionals. Second free throw, good by Gretke. Jack with five points here in the first half. Herberdale facing a little bit of pressure in the backcourt. Sams has it in the lane against Daniel. And his shot up and good right over Daniel and Riggs. How about that for Sam? That was a great move. We talked about how just how he adjusts in the air and is able to somehow get a shot off even though he's at 5'10". Dylan Sams, six points for the Jayhawks. Grayson Smith's leading the way for Urbandale with nine points, 50 seconds remaining. The Maroons trying to play for one. Jack Wadier, who got the start tonight over uh, Drew Dykstra, who's out with an ankle injury, has two points. And Kirby Smith's on the bench with two fouls for Urbandale, has six. Maroons now with uh, Riedel with the basketball, Riedel and Hughes, the two guards out front. Riggs on the post, Gretke on one wing, and Simon Daniel the other. 
25 seconds remaining in the half. And Runes are going to play for one shot, leading by six here, Mike. Well, this is where I use my obligatory, why don't we have a shot clock in high school <laughs> basketball. But I knew it was coming. That, that's another. Uh, I was going to ask you when the Packers play this weekend. <laughs> I didn't see them on the list. And Dave Marcouli and Mr. Matt Maynard, the principal here, are probably about ready to come over here and escort me out for saying that again. Here's Greta Key for three. It's no good. Had a good look at it as... The rebound comes out to Beth, and he heaves it, and we go to halftime, Mike, with Dowling leading 31-25. Yeah, much better offensive effort this time by the Dowling Maroons. They've got a six-point lead, obviously. Last time they trailed Urbandale by seven. Uh, credit Gratian Smits for keeping Urbandale in it with yeah. three threes, Mark, and they were timely. Yes, they were. They, they sort of, you know, they, those were big shots when they needed a bucket. Urbandale outscoring Dowling in that second quarter, 14-13. After Dowling jumped out to an 18 to 11 lead, and reminder here at halftime of the boys contest, uh, we will have uh, the dance team performance that'll be on. Uh, if you're watching on CISN.TV, reminder they will be uh, performing right now. We're going to head to break with our score: Dowling 31, Urbandale 25. Halftime of the boys game, and uh, the girls game won earlier tonight by Dowling Catholic 40 to 28. Dowling girls. Improved their record to nine and four in the number nine ranking in class 5A. Urbandale falls to three and seven. And we'll take a break and come back with head coach Christian Meyer here on Iowa Catholic Radio and CISN.TV. I'm Dr. Katie here at Exemplar Care Urgent Care, the Des Moines Metro's first 24 7 urgent care. That means here at Exemplar Care, we're always here. want to get tested for COVID, you can simply just go to our website and sign up. Um, we offer different types of testing for whatever your needs are, and we offer it in whatever situation you find yourself. Whether it's you have symptoms, whether you don't have symptoms, whether you have a family get together, whether you're actually traveling again. Here at Exemplar Care, we have really found ourselves an expert in testing for businesses. You can go to our website, exemplar.care, and fill out contact information there. But really what we can offer businesses is the ability to stay open, stay safe, and stay COVID free. In addition to being tested for COVID, we also do everything we can to make this as safe of an experience as it can be, whether you have COVID or you don't have COVID. We want you to feel safe, get the medical care and the treatment that you need. Exemplar Care Urgent Care will open officially February 15th and we are excited. We are gonna be the first 24 seven urgent care here in the Des Moines metro area. That means it doesn't matter what time of day it is, we are here for you. Exemplar Care Urgent Care, we are located at 7300 Westtown Parkway. That's just off Jordan Creek. On senior night, congratulations on the win, Ella. Congratulations on your performance. One of, uh, what, six, seven Dowling seniors introduced? Yep. You were in a rhythm tonight, kiddo. Yeah, it was It was great to be back out there. We haven't played a game in a little little over a week, so yeah. it felt good being back out there with everyone, especially on senior night. It was, it was just special in a lot of different ways, and, yeah, it was a lot of fun, a lot of fun. You're one of six seniors in the Dowling team, 16 points, the only Dowling player and leading scorer on the contest, but uh, low-scoring game, second time you played Urbandale. I think they played much better. And they were certainly concerned about Lexi and Emma Gipple. But here you are. You come out. You and the, the three guards, Tobias and Wishman, had a pretty good night. But uh, I have you down for two threes and four other field goals for your uh, 16 points. And uh, you guys are feeling it. Talk about uh, senior night. You go, we started early, 430, and you guys all got introduced. And uh, you're on a roll. Yeah, it looked a little different this night or t tonight and this year than last the couple, last couple of years. But there was no younger games before us. So... We went before the game so, you know, we could get socially distanced and <laughs> practice some COVID protocols here in the gym tonight. So we went early and it was it was nice. We got our families got to walk out with us and, you know, the new normal, right? The uh, new normal. Yeah, yeah. Just grateful for the opportunities we still do get, especially, I mean, just so grateful for the opportunity to play even, right? We Beginning of the season, we didn't even know if we were to get that opportunity. So very grateful for Coach Wilson and 
you know, the athletic department, the athletic department staff for, you know, doing everything they can to get us on the court. It means a lot to us. Well, Ella, I know you play basketball and do a good job. This is your senior year and final week coming up next week with uh, games against yeah. Centennial and Johnson here at the Dowling Gym. But you're going to play softball for the University of Michigan. I know you and Coach O'Connor probably exchanged pleasantries because <laughs> that's his team, and you're going to be attending Michigan. Yeah, I'm really excited. I actually just got my acceptance letter last week, and awesome. I'm signed, signed, signed my NLI in November, so it's getting close. Got a got a summer of softball ready to go, and after that, I'll be heading heading up to Ann Arbor. So, so your mom and dad, Bob and Teresa, were they here along with Logan? Yep, okay. everyone was here tonight. Anybody else from St. Anthony's? The parish in the South Side were. You look in the trophy case, there's a couple that have my name on it. I just didn't know if you knew that or not. It's usually track. But uh, they're all here tonight, huh? Yep. So yep. Your, your softball track, Maroon Crew, Maroon Student Council Board Rep. Did you get reelected? Uh, yeah, well, I was. this is my first year on Maroon Council. Me and Paige Hobbs are student board representatives. Oh, so Hobbsy, yep, that's we're, right. we're sitting in on all the board meetings and keeping them updated on the student body. So. Student Ambassadors and National Honor Society. Congratulations. Well, you Thank need you. to be on that to get into Michigan, right? I'm sure. <laughs> All right. Favorite memory, trips to Minnesota, and I don't understand, vlogging with the I'm lady vlogging. at the top of Iowa. Help, help us out with that. So vlogging, we do, we do videos. We post them on Twitter, keep everyone updated on. Right, I follow you, know, you there. Yep, when sure. we do, when we travel. So we post videos, let everyone know. And <laughs> we've actually seen this lady on all of our trips. I'm sad we didn't get to see her this year, but we always, we always make sure to make a video with her. She's awesome. You're out there tonight with Maddie Wishman, Paige Hobbs, Margaret Tobias, Olivia Bailey and Lexi Bowles, your fellow seniors on this Dowling girls team. And I'll tell you what, I know last year you look back almost a year ago, the, re the, sub the regional final, Sioux City East, and all of a sudden everything's over. And I know you don't want that to happen this year. You don't know who you're playing, but postseason is on the horizon. What's the goals this year, Ella? You know, it just be the best us we can be, right? We work every day in practice, and we just we just focus on us, right? You Like you said, we don't know who we're going to face. And right. It, it doesn't matter really, right? We just got to be the best us, and Coach Meyer makes sure, make sure we get there. <laughs> so we just got to trust us, trust our defense, and trust, trust our offensive movements, and we'll be good to go. You mentioned you, hadn't, you didn't have an opponent Tuesday night, so you didn't have that quick turnaround after the weekend. So you had a week off. And, yep. and how does that work with practice? Because it sounds like it's kind of a preseason again. Now all of a sudden <laughs> we're kind of starting over. We'll put our Urbandale stuff in maybe, uh, maybe Wednesday, Thursday, or something like that, but talk about the week of practice. How is that uh, different? Yeah, so it's obviously really different when we don't have two games scheduled in a week, but uh, Meyer and the coaches make sure we get up and down. We'll do some scrimmages with our JV team too. Just make sure, you know, we're always always getting up and down, keeping our conditioning in shape. There's there's no days off, there's no weeks off. So sometimes we'll get a couple <laughs> extra lifts in, get stronger so we can hit get on the boards, which we really need to keep doing, so. What's it like? I know we, we talk about Danner, one of the assistants, Joel Danner, <laughs> or the assistant Scott Babinette, but having Audrey Favor, a young lady who played college ball, was an all-stater here at Dowling. Mm -hmm. How important has he, she been to practice? And if you're short in a drill, does Audrey kind of jump in? Oh, yeah, she loves it. She loves, Especially when we're doing <laughs> finishing drills. She'll get down there and try to block us, and she does block us. She's got some long arms, but Audrey's been great to have around. <laughs> She's just a, she's a really calming presence. Obviously, she has a wealth of knowledge on the game of basketball, and we're so lucky to have her around. She's been she's been a great great for us this year. We're so lucky. Absolutely, we're visiting with uh, Ella McVeigh, Dowling, one of Dowling's uh, six seniors on the girls' squad, as uh, they defeated Urbandale 40 to 28 in Game One of our doubleheader. The Dowling boys leading Urbandale 31 25. All right, Ella, uh, you know we've got senior night for the. Uh, the girls and boys teams. Next is graduation. Oh. But before that, there's a winter <laughs> formal and other things going on like that. But uh, look back, and it's hard to believe it's been four years. Time flies. Here. Time flies when you're having fun, right? Yeah, it certainly <laughs> does. I had a lot of fun until about the 1st of January when that thing called COVID oh. took me. And I missed your first game over there at Urbandale. But uh, hey, it's been a great ride. It's, it's fun being around you. But of course, we're all socially distanced, so we really can't be. But uh, looking forward to postseason. Finish strong. Centennial yeah. and Johnston next week, yep, and they're both going to be hungry. And you only play uh, Centennial once this year. And you played this will be your second time with Johnston. Talk about the matchups and how practice will be this week. Yeah, obviously, I mean, we, we try to keep a re really high level in, of intensity every single practice, but we'll really be raising the bar th this week. Two big ones, especially before pairings come out mm -hmm. this next week, and we're looking we're looking to get a couple big wins to you know propel us into postseason. Ella McVeigh, thank you. Thank you for being part of our broadcast for many years. Coach brings you up for a halftime. This is the only one we've done with a student <laughs> this year because of the social yep. distancing. But senior night is kind of special. 
Enjoy it. Enjoy it with your family and your teammates. Celebrate. And we look forward to celebrating with you in the postseason with Dallin Girls Basketball. Thank you. It's been, it's been a great four years listening to you call our games. So. <laughs> well, appreciate that. <laughs> Wave to the camera there, Ella McVeigh. That's the gal. <laughs> Leading score tonight with 16 points. Ella, thank you. And uh, we'll talk to you down the road. Thank you. Go Maroons. And we'll take a break. Halftime score of the boys game, 31-25. Dowling with the lead over Urbandale. Along with Ella McVeigh, I'm Mark Amadale. Back with the second half in one minute on Iowa Catholic Radio and CISN.TV. To everyone who believes in competition and good sportsmanship, who knows it's not about the trophies or the medals, but rather the lessons learned. For those who understand, it's not whether you win or lose, just that you give your best. So go ahead, lace them up, take the field, have fun, and play. For the experience, for the memories, for the love of the game, Shields. Here at the Dowling Gym alongside Mike Swain, I'm Mark Amadale. Second half underway, and with the first possession of the second half is Urbandale with it, Mike. And the ball knocked out of bounds. The Dowling bench reacted, and that because there was a <laughs> great block, block by Riggs. Just put that ball from Sam's into the wall here at the Dowling Gym. That usually gets the bench up, and uh, Urbandale retains possession. They trail by six, 31-25 after a... Uh, Urbandale outscored Dowling 14-13 in that uh, second quarter. Now the ball slapped away and stolen away by Dowling. And the front court is Mikey Chase who gets the second half start. Yeah, this is the same starting lineup, Mark, that we had against Southeast Polk. Mm -hmm. So Mikey Chase along with Sam Hughes, Jack Gretke, Ryan Riggs, and Simon Daniel, the five on the floor. Urbandale in man-to-man -man defense. Be interested to see what the adjustments are at halftime, Mike, for both teams. As, uh, well, there's one. Uh, Hughes runs into someone and kind of retains possession, and uh, they keep playing. They lob it into Riggs. He's double team. He's shot off the glass good. They lob it right over Kirby Smiths, and then I think they had uh, his brother playing behind him. Well, and Kirby couldn't do anything, Mark, because of the foul trouble that he's already in. So I think that's a good move by Dowling. They need to go in to Riggs every possession. And that's Kirby Smith scoring for Urbandale. So he might be playing with uh, two fouls, but he now has eight points to lead the uh, Jayhawks. Now underneath, the shot no good. Riggs with the rebound. His put back up and good. One doesn't go, the other will. Already Riggs establishing himself in this second half as he's got four. That was a nice offensive rebound. He had six at halftime, and now he has ten. And in the lane, shot blocked by Riggs. That was DeCrive's shot on the right side. And... Dowling gets the rebound, Chase in the front court to Daniel. 35-27, Maroons by eight. This might be their largest lead of the game over the Jayhawks. Now Riggs, a little tough, or touch shot in the lane. That looks so soft that it's good, and Riggs with 12 points. He has all six points for Dowling here in the third quarter, Mike. Well, he's come out on fire. Two blocks and six points, Mark. I mean, in about a minute and a half of work. Remember, Urbandale beat Dowling 53-45 a, a month ago today. And that was at the Urbandale Gym. And I think a few of these guys realize it. And they've come out hot. Dowling by 10, Urbandale with the basketball. This is Dylan Sams. Yeah, Simon Daniel doing a great job face guarding Grayson Schmitz, who had it three threes in that first half, Mark. Grant DeCryfe out there, along with Jack Wadier, who got the start tonight. He joined us late. Drew Dykstra out for Urbandale with an ankle injury that he suffered against Ames. And now here's Sams, pull up jumper, no good. Rebound. <laughs> Riggs ripped it away from. Kirby Smiths, Dowling in transition. Backdoor cut to Chase, over to Riggs in the baseline. 15-footer, no good. Ball slapped out of bounds. And they're going to give it to Dowling after, I thought, Chase climbed the ladder there. I thought Mikey <laughs> Chase was lucky he didn't get a foul there. And the officials said it went off of Urbandale. So. Yeah. yeah, I saw that. 
37-27. Dowling by 10, 4.45 remaining. And now Jalen Moses checks in and shoots the three. It's good from the left corner. My goodness, you saw the rotation better than anybody up here. Just instant <laughs> offense. He just comes right in and takes a three, and that's going to be a timeout for Urbandale as Dowling has exploded here in this third quarter, Mark. Jalen Moses off the bench with nine points. It's 40-27, to 27, Dowling's largest lead of 13, back in one minute with four and a half minutes remaining here in the third quarter at the Dowling Gym. Dowling 40, Urbandale 27 on Iowa Catholic Radio and CISN.TV. 35 years in the automotive industry, I had the opportunity to build on the American dream, just like Henry Ford did over 100 years ago. Introducing the all-new DeArmond Ford Indianola. Like Ford Motor Company, we're a family-led business guided by our core values of hard work, trust, honesty, and integrity. People drive to Indianola to buy Fords. The all-new DeArmond Ford. DeArmondFord.com. Built for America, sold by DeArmond Ford Indianola. Iowans know that winter means snow, ice, and freezing temps. Severe weather can make the roads downright dangerous. Truck Equipment Incorporated has the toughest work equipment that can stand up to the harshest conditions. Look for Western brand snow plows, quality you can count on. Buy new or utilize our repair services. We'll order new parts for same-day pickup or delivery. And now you can shop from home with our virtual showroom. Go to truckequipment.com today. And we're back here at the Dowling Gym, and a long three up and good. And that's Grayson Smith with his fourth three of the night. He's got... 12 points in the contest. Wow, the coaching staff is frustrated. <laughs> they knew that they could see that coming, a double screen there to get Schmitz open, and he made it count. Nobody stepped through on that pick. Schmitz, the junior, had nine points at halftime for Urbandale, who, by the way, have yet to go to the free throw line tonight. Dowling four for four at the line, and now Dowling for three, and it's good. Well, that's how you do it. You answer a three with another three. Sam Hughes from it, deep in the corner. And Sam with his uh, sixth three of the year. He's got five points tonight. That's 43-30, Dowling by 13. This is the Maroons' largest lead over Urbandale in this uh, contest. The Maroons trying to avenge a loss over at Urbandale earlier this year. Now Bethke has the ball in the lane. It's poked away, and we've got a timeout called by Urbandale, and Coach O'Connor says, hey, that ball was loose, how could you? That wasn't even possession. I'm, I'm not sure how you can call a timeout when there's no possession. Yeah, we'll take a break. It's a one minute break. Three and a half minutes remaining, third quarter. Dowling 43, Urbandale 30 on Iowa Catholic Radio and CISN.TV. Relentlessly, that's what you can always expect, even when faced with the unexpected. It's a service we take seriously, providing comfort in the rain, tools to help you save, a helping hand along the way, and from a safe distance away. Delivering the energy you need while going the extra mile. Regardless of the times, our team remains committed to you. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto. I'm excited to tell you about our new lifetime oil change plan. When you purchase our plan, you'll never have to pay for an oil change again. If you get a different car, simply transfer the plan over. If that car's oil needs are different than your original plan, just pay the difference. It couldn't be simpler. You won't have to worry about inflation or prices going up. Give us a call at Westside Auto Pros to get details on the lifetime oil change plan. And remember, when I say lifetime, I mean your lifetime, not just your cars. Hey, we're back here at the Dowling Gym. Mark Amadillo alongside Matt Swain. <laughs> no, it's Maddie Swain. Maddie, I just got the text. Maddie. Right. Uh, Mike Swain. And now traveling on Urbandale, they had the ball after the timeout that we were questioning how you get tied well, up, and then they traveled. Yeah, Schmitz was trying to get a three <laughs> off, and they came and defended it, and then he just shuffled his feet, and easy call for the officials. It certainly was, and Dowling with the basketball, leading by 13. Simon Daniel with it over to Jalen Moses for three in the corner. It's no good. Rebound cleared out of there by... Bethke, Nolan with the rebound, and Herberdell with the ball. Dylan Sams with it. And Matt Riedel back in, Mark. I see that he can go and you know, hasn't practiced a whole lot since coming off protocol, but he's playing more minutes than I thought he would tonight. There's a dribble handoff going to Sams. They now backdoor cut to Bethke, and a shot blocked by Moses. 
Bethke with the rebound, and now we got a whistle and a jump ball called as Riggs tied up Bethke. Coach O'Connor thought they were going to call a foul, and yeah. they actually called a jump, and he, Coach was... Uh, He'll take that. Yeah, it was Watch clearly it. a jump ball. Yeah. Now, here's the thing with Urbandale. Bethke is playing the post because uh, Smiths is on the bench. You know, the, other, the second Smith, the 6'6 sophomore Kirby, has uh, been on the bench for the Jayhawks. that trap, Mark. Good job by Riedel getting out of it. To Simon Daniel, corner three from the right side. Good! Simon Daniel with his second three of the night. He's got six points. And the Maroons extend the lead to 16 over Urbandale with two and a half to go in the third. Yeah, this has been a fantastic quarter, both offensively and defensively for Dowling. Now the Jayhawks. Sams forces a shot over Riedel, and it's good with the left hand. He switched hands and made it. Eight points for Dylan Sams. Well, he is so good when he gets in the paint. You've got to try and... Keep him out of that area. Make him shoot from outside. Let's see if Herbdale are going to stay in that man. They get it in the corner. Simon Daniel again for three, and it's good. He has the hot hand on senior night. He's got nine points to Simon Daniel. Dowling's lead now 49-32 of 17. Well, Dowling, or Urbandale's very poor rotation getting out on shooters right now. That's why guys like Moses and Daniel are just having a field day out there. All right, Sam's between the circles. Gets it right side to Kreif. Grant with it, guarded by Moses. They switch to the left wing. Here's Sams with it. Waiting for DeCryfe to cut. Now looking for a backdoor cut by Grayson Smiths. Can't get it to him. Now over to Bethke. Out top to DeCryfe. Dribble handoff. Sams in the middle, and he has the ball stripped away and a foul on Dowling. I'll tell you what, Jayhawks were working for it. Yeah, and if you can make... Urbandale sit there and take 40 seconds every possession while you're playing solid defense, Mark. That's exactly what Coach O'Connor wants to see with a 17-point lead. Well, Simon Daniel will check out. He's been hot shooter, and Carson Brown will check in and replace him. Brown will guard DeCryf. Team fouls, Dowling with one. Urbandale none here in the second half. Minute 15 remaining here in the third quarter, and a steal. Andrew Lynch checking in for the Maroons, and he comes up with the steal. It's Riedel with it in the front court. Lynch with the uh, screen and now gets it back. And Lynch for three, good from the top of the key. Boy, it's senior night. Can you feel it? <laughs> Everybody getting involved on the threes tonight. This is clearly the best three-point shooting we've seen Dowling have all year. Lynch with his seventh point off the bench, his first three. And it's 52-32, Dowling by 20 over Urbandale with 45 seconds remaining. Here in the third quarter. Now down the lane, Bethke shot blocked by Moses. And the ball rotated around. Urbandale keeps possession. Sam's three-pointer no good. And the rebound, Hughes. And a whistle and a reach-in foul called on Urbandale. This might be on Bethke. What a flurry there. Urbandale kept the offensive possession alive. Wow, Dowling's just playing with great effort right now, Mark, on both ends. They're, they're just good decisions offensively, moving the ball, hitting the open guy, and defensively, Good rotations. What a block by Moses that time. Uh, <laughs> coming over and uh, helping his teammate out. Bethke with the foul. That's his first. 20 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Now Riedel down the lane. His shot no good. Didn't finish that. And a rebound out to Urbandale and DeCryf. DeCryf down the right side. Leaves it for Bethke. His shot off the glass. Good. Gotta Nolan hurry. Bethke with his first two points. Yeah, Got to hurry. I don't think Hughes realizes how much time's left. Five seconds left. Riedel doesn't either. Matt at half court, he's got to launch it. He does it, the horn is short. And we've come to the end of the third quarter with the score. Dowling Catholic 52, Urbandale 34. Along with Mike Swain, I'm Mark Amadale. As uh, Jeff Pickett is our student producer for Iowa Catholic Radio. We'll be back with the fourth quarter in one minute here on Iowa Catholic Radio and CISN.TV. Hi, I'm Chris with Fireplace Superstore. Falls upon us and fireplace season is here, and you need a new heat and glow high efficient gas direct vet. These are ideal for your new construction project, for your remodeling project, or for removing your old wood burning fireplace and replacing it with a new heat and glow high efficient gas direct vet. Come see us today at Fireplace Superstore, 10820 Douglas in Urbandale. Central Bank opened its doors in 1877 and has been proud to call Iowa home ever since. For more than a century, our family-owned business has worked hand-in-hand -hand with friends and neighbors across the state to make their dreams a reality. 
Come visit us at our new location on Hickman and Waukee and see how Central Bank can make it happen for you. And we're back here at the Dowling Gym. Mark Amadale, Mike Swaim, underway here in the fourth quarter. Dowling team has knocked down 10 three-pointers on the night. Urbandale's knocked down four, all by uh, Grayson Smits. The Maroons lead at 52-34. Now a long three, no good. A foul on Simon Daniel. Free throws coming for Grayson Smits. And we had a stuck ball in the rim, between the rim and backboard. Mike Swain. Well, that's frustrating. They've ran that play a number of times. And, and Simon Daniel, they, they, they set a, a back screen there for Smits coming out on the three-point arc there. And Simon goes flying out there and fouls Smits in the act of shooting, so he gets three. Yes, he does, and Smiths, Grayson Smiths, there's two uh, brothers in the team, Kirby wearing number 52, but Grayson, number 14, shooting. Makes the first free throw. He now has 13 points. Now we got a substitution for Urbandale. Nolan Bethke will check in for Kirby Smiths. And the second and third free throws no good by Smits. So Grayson goes one for three. And now Dowling with the ball, pressure by Urbandale. Down court underneath, and Hughes with the shot rolls off the rim no good. Gretke with the rebound, and bodies flying, and now a whistle, and we got an offensive foul called on Gretke. <laughs> I don't understand that call at all. Uh, Coach O'Connor, he's got that uh, reaction. He doesn't either. 52-36, and <laughs> Gretke is going to be whistled for his first foul, team foul number three, as Coach O'Connor has a visit with the officials. You yeah. remember those days. <laughs> Was it you or your dad that had those conversations? Huh? Unfortunately, we, I couldn't stand. I, you well, know, that's right. You guys had the seatbelt yeah, rule. Yeah, we had to sit, and so the officials wouldn't even come over. Yeah, they had the seatbelt rule. So then I so had to get a little louder so they could hear me. <laughs> Can you imagine you're doing a seatbelt rule and had masks on? That would be interesting. That would not be good. Uh, and a three-pointer, it's no good by DeCryf. Rebound out to Dowling. Yeah, when the Swames retired, they decided, no, coaches can stand. They should be able to stand. They waited for both Swames to get out. I understand. I forgot about that. 52-36 Dowling over Urbandale. Under six, under seven minutes remaining here. Now backdoor cut, Simon Daniel, and again Riggs with a great pass from the baseline. Yeah, just good recognition, feeling the double team, and then having your teammate cut right down the lane with Simon Daniel. 11 points for Simon Daniel, 54-36 Dowling. The front court, Urbandale, Grayson Smits, entry pass, top of the key to his brother Kirby. Kirby with on the right side, guarded by Riggs. Kirby goes the right block, spins, whirls, now it's cut off. Gets it in the corner to the Watier for three, and it's good. Jack Watier with his fifth point of the night. He gets the start over uh, Drew Dykstra, who's out with an ankle injury, and now a backcourt foul on Sams as he tried to uh, steal the ball from Hughes. And Dylan will pick up his third. Team foul number three, I believe, on, on Urbandale with 6.15 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, there haven't been a lot of fouls this half. If the officials have sort of let it go a little bit. You would have to say that. <laughs> Things change. That's the second team foul on Urbadale. Excuse me. Three on Dowling as we approach the six-minute mark. Maroons four out, one in on the perimeter. They kick it out to Gretke for three. It's in it. Good. My goodness. What a pass on dribble penetration by Hughes and Gretke with his eighth point. Yeah, that was a nice ball fake, and the bench loved it. And then Gretke to finish it off with the deep three. Yeah, these guys see it in practice all the time. We, we wait till game night. Long three up and good. I think they're going to get a foul By on DeCryf. Grayson Schmitz on the rebound there. So the basket's going to count, Mark. But they're going to get uh, Schmitz with the foul. He shoved Hughes. Yep. So it'll be team foul number three. The basket's good by DeCryf. That's his fifth point. And he is uh, the second leading scrub. Uh, Third leading score, I believe. Dylan Sams leads Urbandale in scoring with 10 and a half. On the lesser, Urbandale with the press. Dowling breaks it. 57-42 Maroons. 
Five and a half minutes left, fourth quarter. Dowling over Urbandale in the lane. A shot with the left hand good. That's Mikey Chase. He faked one way and went the other. Yeah, nice drive that <laughs> time. And what, what we're seeing here is Urbandale's really trying to overplay, which is going to allow some of those as Dylan Sams has a nice little runner inside the paint. Urbandale not going away here, Mark. No, they're not. And it's just under 5 10 remaining, and a basket by the Jayhawks have cut it to <laughs> Valley and Southeast Polk. Tied at 48 in overtime, Mike. Overtime doesn't leave the Southeast Polk gym and boys play. Now we got a whistle and a foul. Well, that was a great move by Ryan Riggs. He was going to throw that thing down, but Urbandale foul prevented a dunk there. Yeah, Smith, Grayson Smith with his third foul. And I'll put Riggs at the line. Overtime last week, overtime this week at uh, yeah, Southeast Polk. I, I mentioned, Mark, I, I think Southeast Polk's got a real opportunity with their substate to possibly make a run down to Wells Fargo. And I wonder if he's talking about the girls game because we're early. That must be the girls game that's going over time. Ah. Yeah, now, long rebound, no good. Bodies hit the floor as Riggs missed them both. Ball slapped around and who else? Simon Daniel getting the floor burn. Well, good hustle that time by Daniel. But Urbandale's got a chance here, Mark, to get this thing to yes, they do. A, either a 13 or a 12 point game, depending on the two or a three. 59-44, Dowling's lead is 15 after having a 20-point lead earlier. Here's Sam's in the baseline. He's cut off. Work it inside, and I'll kick it back out. And that is a three-pointer no good by DeCryfe, and he's went cold. The ball tipped out of bounds, and Grayson Smith's battling over there with Hughes, and they say it went off of Hughes. Yeah, Dowling was in position that time. I thought the ball might have got knocked out by Schmitz, but officials saw it differently. So... Sam's inbounds it, gets it to Grayson Smits, and get it back out to Sam's. It's going to be over and back on the reverse pass. Turnover against the Jayhawks. Be dialing basketball with four and a half minutes remaining. That's tough for Coach Smith to see a turnover on just an inbounds pass that time when you have an opportunity to maybe get this thing just a little bit closer. So, yeah, the 6 15 game has uh, its number 10 Valley and number four Southeast Polk and girls play in overtime, tied at 48 at the Southeast Polk gym. It's a girls score. Dowling with the ball. Here's Riggs. Nobody wants to guard him. And now the bounce pass to Riggs. He threw it right at Gretikey's uh, yeah, shoe. Yeah, he just went up with that, Mark. He had a wide open look. Now Rubendale the other way. See if they can capitalize on the Dowling miss. The ball's tipped out of bounds by Riggs. Riggs and Knights played hard. He didn't, he didn't start because they gave others a chance to start on senior night. Uh, Ryan is one of uh, 10 Dowling seniors. He gave up his spot to Bialzak, who started and picked up a basket. And Dylan Smith starting for uh, Mikey Chase, and they have contributed tonight. Well, Ryan Riggs basically got this run started, Mark, as we see a moving screen there. Jayhawks pick up uh, the foul. That's on Wadier, his second. But as you, Moses will check in for Jack Redicke. You think about the first th two minutes of this third quarter, uh, Mark, uh, in the, to start the half, Ryan Riggs had two blocks and six points. Yeah. I mean, it was... Uh, Dominant effort there. He came out with fire. And now Dowling in transition. Moses again for three. Now they're going to give it. Yeah, they are going to give him three. It's good. Near official said that's another three for Jalen Moses, his second of the second half. He's got four tonight. He matches uh, Grayson Smith for Urbandale. Well, this is a great sign for Dowling. If they can get a solid contribution from Moses off the bench, Mark, like he did tonight and as well as Southeast Polk game, uh, that could really help them going forward. Jalen at 6'9", and can shoot the outside shot when the Maroons dribble penetrate. Now the other way, Urbandale with the ball, and on the defensive end, Dowling with the reach-in foul, and they're going to get Ryan Riggs with his first foul. Four-team foul on Dowling. Urbandale with five-team fouls. 3.40 remaining, 62-44, Dowling by 18 here in this boys' contest. Now a backdoor cut, and a shot blocked by Simon Daniel as Sams came down, and a great pass by Kirby Schmitz from the top of the key for the Jayhawks. Yeah, just a little give and go that time between Schmitz and Sams, and Daniels thought he had the clean block, but the officials thought he got him just a little bit with the body. And he picked up his third foul, and that'll send Sams to the free throw line, a 48% free throw shooter on the year. And the first one up and no good. Yeah, remind me not to ever say anything about the fouls because we've had like <laughs> six fouls in the last two minutes. So Yeah, I wondered if that was going to come back to haunt you, and it has. Nice game on Iowa Catholic Radio brought to you in part by Dental Associates.
Construction Professionals and Ashworth Vision Clinic. Second free throw coming by Sams is up and good. So Dylan Sams goes one for two. He's got nine points for the Jayhawks. Reminder, other games going on tonight. Valley at Southeast Polk, that girls game in overtime. Roosevelt's at North, East at Hoover. Ames at Ankeny Centennial, those are all girl-boy doubleheaders. And girls only game tonight, Lincoln is at number two Waukee. Waukee coming off a win last night over number one Johnson in girls plays. We've got a whistle and a foul here. Fouls on. And they're going to call Wadier for his third foul. Uh, so Lincoln girls at Waukee. Lincoln boys at Ottumwa tonight. And Ankeny at Marshalltown and boys play. Another corner three, Moses. It's no good. And a rebound, Nolan Bethke. And here comes Irvindale with 3.15 remaining. And now a corner three by DeCryf. In and out, no good. Boy, he can't find the his shot tonight. A rebound out to Bethke to DeCryf. We approach the three-minute mark. DeCryf in the lane against Moses. Can't get a shot off. Now leaves it for his teammate. And a timeout called by head coach John Smiths in his sixth year here at Urbandale. And they're going to see what it is, 30 or a minute. Everybody's still standing. Full timeout. We'll take one. With 2.58 remaining, fourth quarter. It's Dowling 62, Urbandale 45 in the CIML Central Conference Boys Contest. Back to the Dowling Gym in one minute on Iowa Catholic Radio and, and CISN.TV. To everyone who believes in competition and good sportsmanship, who knows it's not about the trophies or the medals, but rather the lessons learned. For those who... understand it's not whether you win or lose just that you give your best so go ahead place them up take the field have fun and play for the experience for the memories for the love of the game shields a rejection after uh, Wadier tries to put it up on the inbounds play, Mike Swain. Dowling leading 64-45. What an exchange there. That was a great block by Riedel. He just continues to show his athleticism. And this is his first game back after being in protocol. Now, Bethke in the lane, and he draws the foul. Moses and Simon Daniel. Jalen Moses and Simon Daniel for Dowling down there. And I think we're going to get Simon. Now Coach O'Connor oh. imploring Moses. <laughs> Moses to just go straight up. <laughs> and they, the reaction is, I did, coach. <laughs> and Bethke's free throw good. Nolan with three points tonight. His dad, Mark, one of the assistant coaches on the Urbandale girls staff this year. And now the second free throw coming from Bethke. 62-46 Dowling. And it's good. Bethke with four points off the bench. 2.45 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Full court pressure by Urbandale. Looks like it's man-to-man. -man. Simon Daniel lobs it to Hughes. Sam across the timeline to Jalen Moses. Back to Simon Daniel. Maroons will play catch in the perimeter. Four out, one in. It's uh, Riedel. And there's Riggs with it on the right to baseline. Now bounce pass underneath to Simon Daniel. His shot up and good. He shot it right over Bethke, and what a pick that time. Mark, the, the movement without the ball has just been fantastic in this game. Just cutting to the basket. Uh, I, I can't tell you how good offense that is. Now underneath, a shot no good by Urbandale as the Southeast Polk wins in overtime in that girls contest by one over Valley. What a game that was. 54-53, I think the final. Now whistle and a foul here. And they'll call Grant DeCry for his first foul. Team foul number seven and free throws coming for Riedel. So right now it's uh, Hughes and Simon Daniel. Sam Hughes, Simon Daniel, Matt Riedel, Ryan Riggs, and Jalen Moses. And Riedel's free throw is good. Matt, he sat out over uh, almost two weeks 
in protocol, and that's his first basket of the night. Or rather, his first point of the night. 65-47, Dowling. Again, after this game concludes, we will uh, have our post-game show. Mike Swam and I will wrap things up. Second free throw, no good. Moses battles for the rebound, gets it to Riedel on the right elbow, and the Maroons will yeah, run some clock with two minutes. There. Yeah, just take a little time off the clock. You want a great shot. Here's Hughes with it, tries to get it to Moses, and a ball is tipped away and retained. Everything's dialing tonight into the hands of Riedel. Here's Hughes with it. Herberdell basically in man-to-man, -man, but they're doing a lot of help defense and not going after the balls. Team fouls, Urbandale with seven, Dowling with six. And now Hughes goes to the basket and draws the foul. And they'll whistle it on. Grayson Smith, so that'll be his fourth. Well, it has been a total team effort tonight by the Dowling Maroons, really just blowing this thing open in the third quarter. And Hughes' free throw, no good. Sam tonight with five points. Second one on the way is no good. And a rebound, Urbandale and Grayson Smiths. We want to thank Kemen, Mercy One, and Dental Associates for supporting our broadcast all season long. A minute and a half remaining. Urbandale with the ball. Sams has it. Almost lost it to Moses. Gets it to DeCryfe. Now in the corner to Sams. And now they draw the foul. Or, nope, kick ball by Dowling. And returning to the Dowling lineup, he started, and he's going to get the finish. Adam Bialzak, number 44. He'll replace Ryan Riggs. Matt Riedel will check out. And checking in for the Maroons is number two, Dylan Smith, who started the game, Mike, on senior night. Well, it's great that these guys have an opportunity, Mark, to start this game and now finish the game. So Urbandale gets the ball in. A little left-handed baby hook. No good by Kirby Smith from the right block. Rebound Dowling. Minute 10 remaining. Pressure in the backcourt. Hughes gets to Simon Daniel. Urbandale traps the ball and a timeout. 30-second timeout called. We'll keep it here by Dowling. That's the first timeout by the Maroons. Urbandale has one left. 65-47, Dowling with the win. And up next for the Maroons with a minute eight remaining next week as Bob Fontana and the Ankeny Centennial Jaguars come to the Dowling gym. They're fourth ranked. And that'll be an early start on Tuesday night. And then next Friday, third ranked Johnston comes in. And they'll be reeling after Waukee got them last night after Johnson beat Urbandale, Johnson beat Waukee earlier. Well, Johnson got beat last night. They had a special Thursday night game, and uh, it was 58-40 in both the girls' and boys' games with Waukee getting the win at Johnston. And that's who we'll see next week, Centennial and Johnson, Mike. Well, it's amazing what happens when uh, Tucker DeVries is able to play in a game. <laughs> I, I, I'm just saying. But. Mike has uh, been lobbying for Waukee to get back to number one. He doesn't think Cedar Falls should be, but he's not an AP voter. <laughs> and the only media credential he gets is the one I issue to him. <laughs> That's so true. That, that, and there's no credibility there either with me. <laughs> All right, Dowling with the ball, and here is uh, Dylan Smith with it, out to Simon Daniel. Herberdell's trying to draw the double team, and now San Simon commits a bad pass and a loose ball foul called. It'll be either on Daniel or... I think they're going to get the Alzac on that one. And they're going to call it on Adam. Yeah, that was one of the only times Dowling has not handled the pressure there, the right. double team. They've right. done a really nice job. You know, they, they turned the ball over the first possession of the game, Mark, yeah. and ever since then they've really had a nice, done a nice job against this pressure. And that's been a bugaboo of Dowling. We talk about all the other things going on that you uh, you mentioned coaching-wise, but Dowling's down to averaging just 16 turnovers a game. I say just. They were over 20 for the first part of the year. Yeah, no, absolutely. They've turned that corner. Yeah, they have. They've done it. They did a nice job against Southeast Polk the other night and a, a nice job tonight as well. Sams misses the front end of a one and one. Rebound Jalen Moses and a foul in the backcourt. I'm not sure why Urbandale is fouling here with 42 seconds to go. I mean, I, I like the kids playing hard, but uh, at this point, Coach Smith has got to just say, hey, fellas, <laughs> hands off defense here. Wadier with the foul, his fourth. Free throws coming for Moses. And returning to the Urbandale lineup will be Kirby Smiths, and he'll replace Nolan Bethke. Bethke is 6'3", senior. He runs that post with Smiths, who's a 6'6", six, six sophomore. And now Moses at the line. And his first free throw is good. Jalen working or in double figures once again. 13 points off the bench for Jalen Moses. 
He's knocked down four three-pointers tonight. And this is the second free throw. Rebound Urbandale with uh, 35 seconds remaining here in the fourth quarter. And this is Smith's for three, and it's no good. Offensive rebound Kirby Smith, brother to brother. And ball taken away from him by Jalen Moses. So Dowling with the basketball. Wins good in the front court to Bialzak. Out front to Hughes. He's going to be double teamed. Keep the ball in the middle. Bialzak with it in the corner to Schmidt, and Dylan won't shoot it. Much to this disdain of his, uh, of Lynch and uh, Riedel there and Riggs. <laughs> they want Schmidt to shoot They want Dylan Schmidt to shoot it. And that'll end the ball game. 66 47, the final. So Dowling splits its uh, series and may have improved their seating. Michael Connor talked about that at halftime of the girls' contest. The Dowling boys' coach may have improved their seating as they start seeding these in Substate 7. Des Moines East, Des Moines North, Urbandale, Lewis Central Valley, and Dowling. And uh, right now, the Maroons now improve their record to 6 and 7 overall. Well, and you think about. And they have head to head wins over North and Valley. Who head to head wins over North and Valley. They got a, a convincing win over Urbandale, even though they split the other game. So I, I agree. I, you know, if you can end up being maybe the three seed mark with, you know, Valley maybe getting the one and then uh, Lewis Central getting the two, that means if, if Dowling were fortunate enough to win, they wouldn't have to see Valley until the sub state final. Yeah, that's exactly true as uh, the Maroons go just two of eight at the free throw line in the fourth quarter. So they were four for four going to the fourth quarter at the free throw line. And uh, they finished tonight six for 12 at the line as uh, Dowling wins at 66-47. The Maroons improve their record to six and seven on the season. Urbandale falls to three and eight. Up next for Urbandale, they travel to Marshalltown for an afternoon contest tomorrow, makeup game at the Marshalltown gym at the Roundhouse in Marshalltown. Girls game around two, at 2 o'clock, boys at 3.30. Then next week for Urbandale, they host Roosevelt on Tuesday night, and they host Hoover on Thursday night, and they travel to number 7 Valley next Friday. So three games. Actually, have the four games in the next uh, week for the uh, Jayhawks. And uh, for Dowling, Maroons uh, have Ankeny Centennial and Johnston next week. Centennial ranked fourth, Johnston third. Just another night at the, uh, at the gym for <laughs> the CIML and Probably the most saltiest division of the CIML when you got Valley and Waukee and Johnston, Urbandale, Dowling, and Southeast Polk all playing girls and boys basketball yeah. twice against each other. Yeah, it's tough. You got a week where you got back to back ranked teams, you know, and an opportunity. Uh, I think it's an opportunity for Dowling to, to possibly get on a roll, Mark. So that's how they have to, I think, embrace it. That's exactly right. We're going to take a break. We'll move to our post game show. It'll be our final segment, final score from the Dowling Gym on Senior Night. Dowling's. Defeats Urbandale 66-47 along with Mike Swain. I'm Mark Amadale, and we'll be back with our postgame show following this break here on Iowa Catholic Radio and CISN.TV. 35 years in the automotive industry, I had the opportunity to build on the American dream, just like Henry Ford did over 100 years ago. Introducing the all-new DeArmond Ford Indianola. Like Ford Motor Company, we're a family-led business guided by our core values of hard work, trust, honesty, and integrity. People drive to Indianola to buy Fords. The all-new DeArmond Ford. DeArmondFord.com. Built for America, sold by DeArmond Ford Indianola. Iowans know that winter means snow, ice, and freezing temps. Severe weather can make the roads downright dangerous. Truck Equipment Incorporated has the toughest work equipment that can stand up to the harshest conditions. Look for Western brand snow plows, quality you can count on. Buy new or utilize our repair services. We'll order new parts for same-day pickup or delivery. And now you can shop from home with our virtual showroom. Go to truckequipment.com today. 66-47, and Mark Hammerdale, Swimmer, the Maroons, uh, you know, getting off the snide, so to speak. They've lost four of their last five games coming in and uh, coming off that double overtime loss last week. Riedel didn't play. He hasn't played in two weeks because of uh, COVID protocol, but the Maroons get a big win at home on senior night. And everything went right for Dowling tonight, it seemed like. This was a really good win, a convincing win, and I think one that Dowling needed to have just from a confidence standpoint. They got off to a good start, and they had good ball movement. And when you get good ball movement and you go inside out, 
it's amazing the looks that you get from three. And Dowling stepped up and really had some success tonight from the three-point line. You think about uh, Jalen Moses coming off the bench with several threes. Four. Four, yeah, threes, four threes there. Threes. Uh, you know, Simon Daniel had a couple threes. Uh, and, and then Ryan Riggs. I mean, I, I thought he set the tone in the second half. This was a six-point game at half, Mark. And Ryan Riggs comes out, goes two block shots, and scores the first six points. And, and really opens this thing up. And then Dowling kept their foot on the gas, which is what you like to see if you're Coach O'Connor. And just a total team effort tonight uh, by the Dowling Maroons. Well, the Maroons uh, put uh, three players in double figures, led by Simon Daniel and off the bench, Jalen Moses with 13 points each. Ryan Riggs off the bench with 12 points tonight. And then uh, eight points for Jack Redeke, who got... Uh, one of the was one of the five starters tonight. Seven points off the bench for Andrew Lynch. He hit a three, and uh, five points each for Mikey Chase, who came off the bench, and uh, Sam Hughes with five points for the Maroons. One point for Matt Riedel, who we didn't think would play a lot. He played more than a lot, and he contributed one point as Dowling went six of twelve, and uh, those are, that's pretty good scoring. I think we had Dowling with ten threes through three quarters, and they finished the night with 12 threes in the contest, Mike. 12 threes, and I really thought what they did was they didn't allow Urbandale to get any second chance opportunities. Their defense really played well, and what happens is when you when you play well on the defensive end and you hold a team to one shot, and then you start going down the floor in transition, mm-hmm. the, the other defense doesn't have a chance to set up, and then you start putting that with good ball movement, and that's how you get great You know, great offense here with 66 points for Dowling. We started to see that against Southeast Polk the other night, and they've continued it here. So Dowling's certainly on a good trend right now, Mark. They certainly are. Dowling wins at 66-47 as the Maroons improve their record to 6-7 on the season. On the horizon next week, it's a girl boy doubleheader Tuesday and Friday. And Iowa Catholic Radio and CISN.TV will both be there. We'll be simulcasting both games next Friday or next Tuesday and Friday as Ankeny Centennial comes to Dowling Gym both nights. So we hope you join us. Early starts, 4.45 will be our pregame. Girls gets underway at 5 o'clock. Boys game to follow right around 6.30, 6.45. You kind of like these early starts, don't you, Mike? I love these early starts. I was trying to lobby back when I was at Lincoln that we should alternate. <laughs> Have the boys go the early game, then the girls, you know. I could see that. And I could, the only person I could, I could get, Coach Dorfeld did that at Roosevelt. And I'm like, yeah, see, this is, this is what we need. So. Uh, I, I love the early starts. I remember uh, that used to happen. Yeah, I remember they flipped the boys and the girls. Some, one place it happened, it was at Des Moines East with Sam Powell's coaching. They would flip the starts. The girls would have the late game. They would. Remember that? Yeah, well, they, and they were quite the show. <laughs> yes, that, they were. They, <laughs> and, uh, they, they Sam, were the featured act over there. Sam won a couple state titles that way. That's right. And, and rightly so. All right, Mike, well, I appreciate your help. Uh, I don't know when we were on TV, but we were on TV, CISN.TV, getting you ready for state tournament week. And hopefully there is a state tournament. Hopefully I, there's some fans there. You're so right. Kinda... That we are hoping that for that. That's for sure. All right. Well, again, Dowling improves its boys' record to 6-7. and seven. Urbandale falls to 3-8 and eight on the season. And remember, uh, this Sunday in Class 4A, the coaches this Sunday will be seeding their brackets, or their sub-state groupings, I should say. And Dowling uh, Coach Michael Connor will be lobbying, kind of like uh, going down to the state house and lobbying or, or doing things like that. They'll all be – Putting their team in, okay, one seed, two seed, three seed. It's, 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 it's an event, and it's on Zoom this year because uh, they can't travel. Well, no hacking into that meeting, Mark. You just keep I'm, your head down. I'm, and I'm lobbying for a password, uh, and I'll send it to you. Just on the couch with some <laughs> chips and dip for the Super Bowl, okay? Well, they're going to do it early Sunday. Oh, okay. They're not going to do it during the prime time, 530. So the Packers and who play? <laughs> oh, I'll be calling you tomorrow oh. when, when my North right. Carolina Tar Heels beat your Duke Blue Devils. Uh, Miss Bassett over here, and is a big Packer fan. You are Mr. Maindring, the principal at Dowling. Let's see who else. Oh, Mr. Marcouli, the legendary Packer fan. They're not playing. So it's Tampa Bay and Kansas If I could Kansas keep City. some people from betting on the Packers like what happened last weekend, they would, yeah. they would be playing this week. But I, I won't. no names mentioned. I understand. Okay. Mike Swing, we'll talk to you Tuesday night. Thanks for being here. Thanks, my, Mark. My broadcast partner, Mike Swing. That'll wrap things up from the Dowling Gym. I want to thank all the folks behind the scenes. We'll do that first with uh, Anna Bassett, Reese Webb on the camera for, I, for CISN.TV, Pete Tarpey, and our thoughts and prayers go out to the Tarpey family on the death of uh, Pete's wife, Mary, uh, last week, and uh, the funeral was earlier this week, and we keep Pete in our prayers throughout this whole time. He was here tonight just making sure all the kids were doing their jobs correctly and uh, what a mentor he's been 
to CISN.TV and to all of us. So uh, we thank Pete for that. Our thanks to Tom Wilson, the athletic director here at Dowling, and of course all the people behind the scenes here at Dowling Catholic High School, Colleen Webb, Michael Connor, the boys coach, and our thanks to uh, the Urbandale coaches, Whitney Lawler and John Smiths. Our thanks to their uh, veteran athletic director at Urbandale, Dr. Bill Watson. He and Tom Wilson do a great job leading both Dowling and Urbandale. Our thanks to Dr. Watson and his staff. And, of course, uh, basketball coaches Kristen Meyer and Michael Connor. We thank Coach O'Connor for being our halftime guest the girls' game. We thank Ella McVeigh for being our halftime guest during the boys' contest. Congratulations on the win. For my broadcast partners tonight, Steve Devenny and Mike Swain, our studio producer at Iowa Catholic Radio, Jeff Piggott. I'm Mark Amadale reminding you of the final scores for the final time. The Dowling girls defeat Urbandale 40 to 28 to improve their record to 9 and 4. And the Dowling boys a winner tonight in game two, 66 47 over Urbandale to split the uh, season series. And the Dowling boys improve their record to 6 and 7. Urbandale falls to 3 and 8. For everybody involved, this is Mark Amadale saying good night and so long. For Steve Devinney and Mike Swain, wishing you a safe and blessed, faith filled evening.